Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. Skits right now. Um, joining me now, there's no Jerry, but we got Tom. What's going on, Tom? What's going on, Oscar? How you doing tonight? Doing absolutely fabulous, man. Just, it's going to be a great-ass show tonight, man. And uh, the reason why it's going to be a great-ass show is because we have a special guest here tonight. Um, for all you people that are listening, if you're familiar with with the company's PWG, Championship Restaurant Hollywood, TNA. The name I'm going to bring up, you, you, you know this person really well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the fucking machine himself, Brian Cage. What's going on, man? Brian, hold on. Brian, are you there? Hold on a second. I think there's something wrong with his uh, mic for a second. Hold on. Let me take All right, Brian, are you there? Yeah, if you don't hear me. Yeah, now with a minute ago we couldn't hear you, but now we did. I was something that um, something happened to the mic, but now we can hear you now. Yeah, everything all good? You can hear me fine. Yes, perfect. Yeah, now. you're all good. It's, okay. It's a blog. You know what? It's blog talk radio. Trying to bury <laughs> you, but you know what? You're well, not out there, well, and you're, you're gonna talk, just you're gonna just get Larry the shit out of blog talk. Yeah, yeah. Blog talk radio needs to realize <laughs> I'm gonna get my shit in, whether they like it or not. So just got to sit back and relax. <laughs> Well, I'm on, the, on the mic, so chill out there. But thank you for the introduction, <laughs> quite the introduction. And uh, I like you guys' little uh, little intro there too for your show. That was that was hot. Yeah, thank you. You know what? We were actually were thinking about changing it, but now you're the third person that brought, brought it up. We might not even change it at all. So <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get the show on the roll, I just want our listeners to know if you guys have any questions. For um, Brian Cage, you can always tweet us at Wrestling Heads, or you always can call us at seven six zero four five four eleven zero seven. I guess uh, uh, I guess I'll start off with a question. Um, my first question I'd like to ask you, uh, Brian Cage, uh, this weekend or, or Friday night, uh, you're going against the debuting uh, Uha Nation at PWG this weekend. Um, I'll, I'd like to ask you. Are you looking forward for your match with Uha Nation? And uh, what's your thoughts of Uha Nation um, as the as a person? Well, check out. I've never I've never personally met Uha yet. Um, I know we've uh, we've actually talked a lot uh, online just because so many times through Twitter and every social media deal, people have either asked him or myself like, "Oh, I, I, when are you guys gonna face each other? When are you gonna face Brian Cage? When are you gonna face Uha?" Like, oh. I'd love to see that match, blah, 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 whatever. So, uh, you know, I just started talking to him once I knew of him. I was like, hey, man, when's this match ever going to go down? Everybody wants to see it. And obviously, you know, being being two big jacked-up guys in the Indies who can both also do, you know, versatile things rather than just be a big powerhouse, um, you know, it obviously warrants, you know, wanting to wanting see. So so I'm excited that's finally happening, even more so that it's finally happening at, at, at PWG. It's probably the best place to do it. And... Seeing Uha's debut match, I love having people's debut match just because it gives like an extra, you know, uh, oomph to the crowd to see somebody new. Plus, wrestlers are usually, you know, jazzed and really excited to to work there for the first time. So it just kind of creates like an added special feel and atmosphere, you know, to to, to the bout. Um, as far as you want from my talk to now, like, he's like a great guy, you know, he's jacked up, he, lo- he looks like a professional, so that's always a plus. And uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm super jazzed about the match. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to be there this Friday. Um, I'm not only the, you know, the check out this match, I am, you know, I feel like this is the first time opportunity to check out Uha Nation, um, you know, in person because, you know, I'm never in the East Coast and uh, I feel like it's a good opportunity to check out Uha Nation. So, um, yeah, you know, 
I'm looking forward to it, man. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time, man. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Well, thank you for joining us here. My question uh, is a little bit wrestling-related, but because you've missed the past couple of PWZ shows due to injury, uh, I just kind of wanted to get an update from you on how you're feeling physically, you know, how you've been back in the ring ever since, you know, sustaining the injury. So how do you feel overall? Uh, you know what? Actually, I, I feel almost almost 100%. I um, I, I tore my hamstring back in uh, the end of June, like literally like the last day of June. Uh, and that had me out for like like six weeks or so. I came back, um, ha- had a couple matches that weekend. I trained like legs a couple times that leg or that week to uh, try to make up for lost time. I, I was hitting stairs like crazy an hour a day, like just, just killing myself. And what happened was my uh, my knee was overcompensating because my hamstring wasn't uh, it wasn't like so injured. Was was about injured more, but it wasn't like firing correctly. So my knee like took up the the the, the brunt of that, and it got inflamed. And um and just where I wasn't like able to really do much with it was I don't know what the injury was I really never got it properly diagnosed but I, I thought it just kind of would go down from like overuse over a week and it just didn't and I I still kept working on it and uh, I got some treatment on it kind of like prolotherapy if anybody doesn't know what that is that's that's like you inject basically sugar water into the area and it creates inflammation um, which which increases the red blood cells to, to to heal the injury more not to get all scientific on you anyways. Long story long. <laughs> um, so I, I had a treatment on a week before, and it, it helped out, and I did it again. And literally, like, a couple of days later, which was Bola, uh, my knee just swelled up out of nowhere, like, crazy bad, where I could, like, not walk at all. And it was that way for, like, a good week. And I actually wrestled the following weekend after Bola, and I wrestled the weekend before Bola. So it was just absolutely the shits on timing. And uh, I should have been good to go on Bola, and I just – just was absolutely, like I said, just the worst timing. So since then, it's improved. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been able to train leg, legs again. I've been doing cardio again. So it's not 100% yet, but, I mean, I'm probably, like, you know, in the, the mid to high 90s. So I feel, I feel you know, great physically and, and able to go back to doing what I do. Oh, that's you know, it's good to hear that. I know you were disappointed that not only did you miss 11, but you missed Bola. But, uh, yeah, kind of disappointed you probably said. isn't the right word, but yeah, I was kind of bummed. <laughs> For sure. Whatever, whatever adjective they want to use, I understand. You know, everyone was upset because you couldn't get your shit in. But of do course. you think you said you wrestled, you know, before <laughs> Bola and then after Bola? Um, you know, in independent wrestling, uh, it seems like guys tend to try to work through injuries to, uh, you know, because they want to make money because you, you know, you wrestle per appearance. <laughs> So do you think yep. kind of missing Bola was just a precautionary thing, saying, you know, I'm not going to risk doing this, you know, something could happen? Uh, well, you know, actually, because, too, I, I I was limited in my matches, the match the week before Bola and after Bola, um, but I was able to get through it. And, no, what what it came down, I mean, realistically, when I look back at it now and how bad, like, my knee was, that, especially that weekend, like I said, it was like a good week or so that it was pretty inflamed, but, uh, I mean, I really doubt that I was going to be able to do much at all. I mean, I had, like, no strength in my leg. I, I had, like, no range of motion in my leg. But more importantly, um, being that it was Bola and PWG, like, I, it was almost not – I mean, yeah, I definitely could have hurt my knee for sure and could have easily torn something with no, like, muscle support to, to protect anything. But even more so was the fact that, like, look, if I can't go out there – and properly perform at the level that I need to on this show, like, then that's just, like, it basically, it, it probably would have done more damage to have worked and had uh, a shit of a match where I wasn't able to do anything rather than just pull off the show and, you know, because, and, and save my, my health as well. So um, I, I didn't want to, and I, I was hoping it would go down. I, mean, I drove to the show. I was still in L.A. for the whole weekend, and I was hoping that, you know, that something would change. But, I mean... It, it just wasn't getting any better, and I mean, it was definitely the the smart move to do to, to to pull off the show. But yeah, it was the main show I was looking forward to all year. I mean, when I tore my hamstring and I missed eleven, I was so pissed about that. But I was like, you know what? As long as I make Bola, I'm fine. I can miss all these other shows for six weeks, but if I make Bola, I'll be good. And that's the freaking the only show I miss after that. So I mean, it, it is what it is. It's came and gone. Nothing I can do about it now. But I mean, yeah, like I said, in the long shot, it was probably a smart move for for the health of my knee, but also. I mean, just just for the fans and for the overall, you know, matches that weekend. You know, TJ and, and Bobby Fish killed it. 
they had an awesome match. And I think if I would have been in there, it, it you know, probably would have been the greatest thing. For sure, man, for sure. But good to hear that you're getting back to almost 100%. And, you know, there's plenty of ass whooping to come in the future. I can expect exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I got, I got to make up, you know, for, for some lost time. So I got to double up on, on getting my shit in. Yeah, and what what a better what a better way than to kick it off against the debuting Uha Nation and PWG. So I know yeah. tons yeah. of people are hyping it up. So what a way to come back. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. So I'm, I'm you know I almost feel like I'm making the debut too after I'm missing you know the last couple of big shows. So like I've been been away forever. So it's like uh you know re- returning for me and uh, debuting for him. It's gonna be awesome. Without a doubt. All right, Oscar, I'm gonna throw it back to you. Yes, um, I know we're still in the uh, uh, in the sub I mean, topic with PWG. Um, uh, my next question I'd like to ask you that you, that you're going to be wrestling a debuting UHA Nation. Is there anybody that you like to see debut in PWG in the future? That anybody who has, that has, has an opportunity to work with PWG? Um, let's see here. Oh, I'm sure it's funny. Um. Maybe I'll be biased too, some some people I get along with. But I, I, he actually was almost uh, almost took Bobby Fish's spot before he replaced Air Fox. But um, a fellow Northern Californian that I actually started up with, and Timothy Thatcher, was fantastic. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know him or not. He's been with, with Evolve and stuff as of late. But um, he almost got uh, got the call to come to Bola, uh, but it wasn't able to work oh. out. But I would like to see him get another opportunity to uh, to, to you know to debut down there. Um, especially too, it's like I wasn't sure how his style would get over, but I mean, geez, if all the guys are bringing in from Drew Gulak and and freaking Zack Saber Jr. and then Kyle O'Reilly, obviously with that style, like a lot of guys have that you know, Matt submission submission based style now. So I think he would do do great down there now. Um, outside of Tim, let's see who else, who else is there? Uh, maybe Chris Dickinson from uh, oh from, yeah uh, over there, yeah. Um, PW, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's guys that. Uh, uh, I mean, Marco Estrada up in up in Canada that worked a couple of times. I think is really great and would do well there. He's got a great look. He can do tons of things. He's he'd be an awesome competitor. That's that's a relative unknown. I think would kill it down there. Um, see, I'll kind of that. I don't know. Those, those probably are the first three names that come. To, I mean, Alex, I think they're 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 good and deserve it. Obviously, you know, I'm I'm cool with all of them. But so, I mean, I, I'd I'd love to see them get that opportunity. I know. You know, in the indie world, almost like everybody's trying to get the pro wrestling gorilla as if it's like the WrestleMania of the indie, just because it's you know the as Tommaso Ciampa said, the Disneyland of of you know wrestling. So, um, you know, it, it is just like an awesome, awesome place to, to wrestle, and just like a, a feeling and sense of accomplishment, you know, to get booked there, since it's so many people want to be booked there, and it's so hard to get on. Yeah, definitely, I get you. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, as a fan, I, I'm I'm very patient. We got to be patient that we want to see. Like, uh, like I I agree with you. I like to see Thatcher in there. He's he's a great talent. I uh, I hope one day he'll make it down there. And uh, and a tag team I would love to see the debut in PWG would be the, the Juicy Product. I mean, those guys will will um will, will light up that crew, see the crowd. I know for sure they will. So that's a yeah. I know we've had we've had quite the steam over there. Yeah, over there in East Coast. Just stuff, bring him in the yeah, West Coast. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> it'll be freaking great. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna be just patient. So, you know, I was waiting for Bobby Fish. I finally got him. So, you know, I'm, I'm a patient guy. So, <laughs> um, well, you know, people I'm gonna, people will get you. People usually get picked up from there. And, you know, the roster starts to thin out. They got to replace them. A good thing is there's always someone there waiting in line to replace, you know, when people get signed or leave or whatever the case may be. But I mean, I'm just saying there's there's so many great talents out there. And there's only so many a handful of spots, you know what I mean, that you can have on the card. So, and then luckily every now and then you get like a big All Star Weekend or Bowler Show where you can get some some people to debut and get some one off opportunities. But I mean that's just a fact. It's not that people aren't good enough or like you know that he wouldn't want to bring them in, but you can only bring in so many people at a time. So I mean exactly, you just gotta be patient, wait for it, and eventually you know you make enough noise and uh, you know keep keep getting yourself more and more over. It's, it's like you get on the radar and eventually. You know, the spot will open, and hopefully you're there for the call. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to go pass it back to Tom. Uh, go ahead, Tom. All right. Sticking on PWG, just for a little bit more, you know, 11 just passed. 
and you actually made your debut at a PWG 7, so it's been roughly four years since you've been in Reseda. Uh, just talk about some of your most memorable moments, some of your favorite moments that you've had there. Uh, well, you brought up absolutely hands down. So my favorite moment is seven. Uh, you know, I say I love having people's debut match. I remember having my debut match there, and uh, against Brandon Bonham, who is uh, probably my best friend in wrestling, and he's done hung up the boots now. But uh, I know I was trying to get a singles match with him for years. Like before I went to the WWE, after I came back from the WWE. I kept trying to get a match with him, and it, it did get booked a few times, and the show would get canceled or postponed or or whatever the you know case was. And finally, after years, it finally got booked, and uh, he called me up. He's like, oh, dude, the match is finally happening, and it's fucking happening at PWG. I'm like, what? So, I, you know, obviously I was trying on PWG for, like, almost equally as long. So to, to have both come together at the same time, I was so ecstatic. And, uh, I mean, I, I thought the match went fantastic. I love coming out. And having the crowd chant, who the fuck are you? And then, you know, halfway through the match, they're chanting, this is awesome. And then they're giving the please come back and standing ovation. And, I mean, just, just the, the turn of the crowd and, like, the, I don't know, just, just everything about the match. I, I loved it. And it was the first time we ever worked. See, I mean, we both have been around each other so long and good friends, but we've never got to work each other. And, I, I mean, I just loved the match. Uh, the crowd was insane. I mean, that, that's, still, I think, one of the just best PWG shows they have ever produced, and that's, you know, that's saying a lot because every show they have is amazing. And uh, I think that crowd was one of the largest crowds, too, on Saturday, you know, with, with obviously uh, Brian Danielson being there right after he got temporary release from WWE. And that was just an overall amazing show, amazing feeling, amazing night, hands down my, my number one. Um, obviously, some uh, honorable mentions. Um, my match with Kevin Steen, just because that was kind of like my first, you know, push uh, – up alligator, just, you know, like a, a local guy, if you will. Um, my match with Elgin, that's one of my favorite matches I've had. Uh, recently, my match with Rod, Roger Strong, definitely one of my, 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 my recent uh, really enjoyed, like, favorite matches. And probably, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll throw out the Tommaso Trump match just because of all the drama revolved around it with me <laughs> getting uh, knocked out. And uh, the, the only time ever in my life I've ever seen the receded crowd go completely silent. Yeah, I was there. I, I was there. And your girlfriend, you know, ran down the stairs. I was like, wait, I saw her ran down. I was like, okay, this is not no angle or nothing. This is real. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know because, like, a lot of people question, like, if it was real or not. And, like, even if you have DVD, it kind of looks like I'm signed back up. But, I mean, like, I was out. I was out cold. I remember Angelo saw it, and he thought I was dead, the ring announcer. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember shit. I don't remember the match at all now. I don't remember, like, two hours before the match. I don't remember, like, a few hours after the match. I mean, I don't remember anything. People yeah. tell me stuff that happened after the match, and, like, I don't know. That, that's gone, man. It's a forgotten memory, so. Yeah, yeah, as a PWG regular, that's, like, one of the um, moments I'll never forget. So, uh, you know, I, there'll be more, but I'm not, I'm not, not like, that way. But, you know, that's one of the moments I'll never forget. I mean, just going on these PWG shows, so, um yeah, I'm never going to forget that. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's all, it was an unfortunate accident, uh, and I yeah. think we had a better match on paper that we wanted to do. But I think that the match we had with it was almost better. The fact that just obviously there's still it wasn't what we wanted, but that added a bunch of added drama to the match because it was real. You know what I mean? So um, you couldn't have you know can that or plan that one out. And so I, I, that that I think gives it you know a little more special to the match and it gets brought out brought up a lot. Um, obviously, I'm not, you know, happy that it happened, but, I mean, it is what it is. For, it's not ballet, as they say, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely just brings up a, a lot of questions. And, and more so, I, I do remember, like, at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, when I was, like, my memory kind of kicks back in. I remember talking to uh, to actually my, my girlfriend, uh, now wife, um, that, uh, like, about the match. And I was like, we did this? We did, like, so I knew I was knocked out, and my, you know, my head was killing me and everything. And I was like, we did the general suplexes? Like, did he crush me at the top rope? Like, did we do that? Did we? I'm like, what? I was like, this, are, was I stupid? Like, what was I doing doing all these moves after I just got, you know, killed? <laughs> like, and, and even the next day, like, nobody wanted me to wrestle, but they still gave me the option to wrestle, so I took it. But I was, deep down, I was, I was a little worried because I felt like a strong, you know, stiff, stiff breeze would knock me out. So I was a little concerned that, like, you know, I would catch a form or something and I would just go out, you know, flip the switch. And that's dangerous because the more that happens, then you're, you, you know, you fuck yourself. You get post concussion syndrome real bad, and keep on knocking yourself out and brain damage, and you can be done. So, 
I was a little worried, but you know, luckily I it was it was fine. I got to wrestle Drake Younger, and we killed it, and it was me more just getting my shit in. So, um, you know, that worked out. But yeah, definitely definitely scary moment, but you know, uh, a, a memorable and unforgettable one at that. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, I guess it's my turn to ask the question next. Um, now we're gonna go off CWG. Um, my next question is gonna ask you is relate to Lucha Underground, which I saw you at, at, at the last taping. Uh, you had a match with um, Mariachi Loco, which uh, before we went on the air, he discussed that was a dark match. Um, my question I want to ask you about Lucha Underground is that uh, what is your status with them? Are you going to be showing it up regularly, or it was just at one time with Lucha Underground that you're going to be performing with these guys? Uh, no, I have uh, I, I I have signed on completely. I have a deal with them, and uh, I will be uh, I will be there, you know, throughout the the rest of. Uh, of the taping, and hopefully it does well and keeps on going. Because I, I, right now, everything that you want, I think, it looks awesome. Is awesome, and uh, I'm, I'm coming in looking to make a, you know, impact in GMSI as well, and be the F machine that I am, and and uh, you know, tear it up. I thought the, the the tapings that they did this past weekend, or well, past show, shows or whatever, um, were amazing. Uh, were you there for the Sunday taping? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't there Sunday. It was Saturday. The one you had with uh, oh. Lucha. I mean, oh, I mean, to get the I mean stuff, so, yeah. But, well, the yeah. Saturday still was great with those, the 10 man matches and the ladder match and stuff. But the Sunday match, man, was like the, probably the first time in a long time that I've been in to a wrestling match, like as a fan. Not just like as like a, you know, as a worker. I'm like, oh, this is a really good match. I appreciate it. Like, I was into it. Like, man, this is. I'm really enjoying this right now. Like I feel like a fan. Like it was a really good match. So I think they put out great stuff. But yeah, you know, I'm 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 along for the ride. So that was just me getting my feet wet. You know, uh, warming up, seeing how it feels down there. But I will uh, I will be there from this point forward. Yeah, and um, I've been telling uh, people in the in this show that you know I I attended from the first show to a couple of shows after that and. It seems like the show gets better and better, and uh, I recommend all you guys to check Lucha Underground when it debuted on the El Rey Network, October 29th, every Wednesday night. Uh, and don't worry, it's, it's going to be on 8 o'clock Eastern, so you don't have to worry about, you know, either Big Dam or TNA. You can watch that before, then you can watch TNA afterwards. So, um yeah, I recommend you guys check it out. And um, you're going by a cage now in, in Lucha Underground, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. That is right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I don't know if you want to change the names, but I, I, I'm i glad that I still have, have that part of it so there will be some consistency in the matter. But, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully Lucha Underground, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, it gets better uh, when, uh, in the future, and because I, I I see a lot of potential, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I enjoy every show I attend to, and I'm gonna go this weekend uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm also gonna see you there as well at <laughs> IPWG. So uh, yeah, it's gonna well, be a fun weekend. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three days of <laughs> yeah. days. It sounds amazing, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, right. I, 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 <laughs> I know where they yeah. want to go, and, you know, I think that they're doing great right now, going back to Lucha Underground. I think, you know, if everything goes well, man, they got a lot of, a lot of good things in store. So, um, I, you know, I hope it does because it's, it's, it, will, it only helps the wrestling community. And, you know, it begets better competition. It gives everybody something else to look forward to, something else to watch. And, you know, it, it can only be beneficial to, to the fans, to the business, to the workers. I mean, it's, it, it's great all around. So, you know, I hope it, I hope it does well and keeps succeeding and, and grows and does what, it, what it's – Supposed to do what it hopes to do. So, and, and from what I've seen, you know, it, it's very possible to do that. I mean, I think too, what's nice about it is they're offering a different approach to wrestling and like a different product to watch, rather than, you know, trying to be a a, a second rate WWE. You know what I mean? Because if you're going to do that, that's exactly what you'll be if you succeed in second rate WWE. So, like, who's going to watch that? If they can watch the real thing, and uh, and even TNA, I don't know what's going on with TNA, but um, whether they stay or go, I mean, I still think it's it's different TNA. I think it has better, you know, pure wrestling and stuff um, than, than either one of them. And, uh, you know, obviously there's different people and it has, like, the Lucha Flair in it and stuff. But, I mean, it's it's not uh, it's, it's not AAA or CML still. So it's still very American style and, you know, has the same psychology and stuff. So I think it, 
it, it's definitely uh, worth worth uh, checking out for sure. Yeah, yeah. See you and Brian Casey. Check it out. Um, I recommend you guys check it out. Uh, can't wait when you guys on get get on TV. And uh, Tom, go call Comcast and say you want El Rey Network. Trust me, you'll yeah, enjoy yeah. El Rey Network. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, call I'm Comcast. Going yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call them. I'm going to complain. I mean, talking with Comcast uh, customer service is a, is, a, is a little bit of a pain in the ass, just a little bit, but I think it'll be worth it. And there's a lot of hype going around Lucha Underground, so I think it'll be worth it having to do with their customer support. Yeah, definitely. Um, go ahead, Tom. Uh, ask him your next question. <laughs> All right, my next question has to pertain to something that actually didn't happen, and that was you were booked in a tag team match with uh, Mr. Tommaso Ciampa in Beyond Wrestling, which unfortunately didn't happen due to Beyond Wrestling canceling their show due to the shooting up the road, and they had to close down for a couple of days. I just wanted to get your whole opinion and thoughts on the whole situation that was going down there talk about a little bit beyond, beyond wrestling if you can. And, of course, they're going to be coming back in uh, late November. So are there going to be any plans for you to possibly return? Um, I'm, I'm actually the, curious, uh, or curious, glad you brought that up. I'm more surprised that no one else has, has said anything about that. But, yeah, that was an extreme bummer, man, big-time bummer. Um, you know, I, 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 well, I wrestled the day before. and something, you know, drove to the airport, took a red eye over there. You know, it was all jet lagged, tired of shit. So I left the venue for a couple hours early, waiting for it. And literally, like an hour before doors open, I think it was, uh, Drew walks in, calls everybody into the room, says, "Up, oh, the show's not happening. Show's over." And I'm like, "What? No way! Come on, really?" And uh, and to correct your statement, Beyond didn't cancel the show. The freaking city police shut down the venue. So, <clears throat> I mean, it it sucked. And normally, you know, you'd want to be like Rage, you have to promote her. But Drew's a great guy. He got, you know, Drew that promotes uh, Beyond Wrestling. It's a, it's a fantastic place to work. And he, it was at no fault of his. So, I mean, you can't really be mad at the guy. It wasn't, it wasn't his fault. He did nothing wrong. I mean, he really just got fucked over. There was a shooting. Uh, there was a fight in the club that escalated out outside of the club, and there was a shooting, and whatever happened. And the, the police actually came and investigated it. I think what made it worse was that the club owner tried to case save him on um, the, the shooting, and one of the security officers that were on uh, the premises for that, that concert, like, told him there's a shooting. So they wanted to investigate it further as if there was, you know, some other foul play or something else going on. So the police came and shut the place down, uh, you know, mid uh, middle of the day. So, I mean, it, it just is what it is. I'm glad I got this sorted out and it's reopened, and uh, I should be there on its uh, on the end of November. So maybe that match will still happen. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to the match. Um, you know, too, but going back to the show being canceled, uh, you know, he, he, he took care of it well. He refunded the fans' money. He had his food truck out there. He gave away all the food for free. I mean, oh, my goodness, his family makes amazing food. I mean, they ain't no popcorn and hot dogs, you know, like at most places. This stuff is freaking unbelievable. And, uh, you know, all the wrestlers were out there. We all, you know, we, we sold some merch, but had a big meet and greet and hanging out. And, I mean, it was still a good time. Everybody's in pretty good spirits about it. Nobody was, you know, hating life or all pissed off. Like, it was, it was good showing, and, you know, it was, it was nice of him. To, most promoters would, well, A, the food. I mean, he already had that made, so he had to do something with it, so he just gave it all free as, as apology. And it's like most promoters want to try to freaking refund the fans. He's like, oh, I guess it's my money. So, we I mean, know he's a good dude. They still, you know, trying to take care of all the, all the workers from the show. So, um, you know, it, it was literally probably the most random BS thing that could happen and, you know, probably the last thing that anybody expects to happen. Usually, yeah, it is the, the promoter, you know, being the scumbag or shortchanging somebody or shutting down the show or whatever. But, like I said, you know, it just it, – it's not even one of those things. It's just like a super random rare occurrence that, you know, somebody just messed it up for everybody else and nothing can really do about it. And it was what it was. And, I mean, it sucks, but looks like everything will get reconciled and move forward. Yeah, it was definitely one of the weirdest things that I have seen, you know, from something in independent wrestling. You know, anything can happen, but you know, to, to hear something to, like that to a good company definitely is never a good thing to hear. Oh, I know. It sucked for them big time. I mean, it, it wasn't their fault. And they really just, you know, and, and I know he was worried about it too. 
getting on, on mind that like, oh, they canceled the show as if then they would get a bad rap about it when it had nothing to do with him. You know, it wasn't his fault. And, and two, they, they tried for uh, for a good hour or two that they had trying to call every single person in town any sort of connection they could get to get a venue last minute. You know, on a freaking thirty minute notice to move the place somewhere else. But obviously, you know, no venue was open, especially on a Sunday, or nobody was going to come open it up or whatever. So, I mean, he tried to sort it out as best he could until the last possible minute that we had to get out of there. So, I mean, he did, he did look good, and it still worked out. I mean, I, I think all right at the end of the day. But, um, and I, I was looking forward to that match too. So, you know, maybe something uh, – maybe it could still happen or something similar might happen then on these next shows. Yeah, definitely. And – I know a bunch of East Coasters love seeing you over here because we don't get to see you much over here. So it was just like, all right, come on. But yeah, I hopefully you'll be back. I know, I know. You know, I, I've seen I've seen some of your matches and beyond uh, with Chris Dickinson, which you could actually, if any of the listeners want to check out, you can check out uh, Beyond Wrestling's YouTube page. It's up there. Check it out. Hard hitting match. Won't regret checking it out. So hopefully we'll get to see some more hard hitting action over here on the East Coast from you. I know I, I definitely plan on it and want to do. It. Oh, yeah, I was I was stoked to be back. So you know it sucked to come all that way just to uh, just to sell a T-shirt. But you know, like I said, it's it's, it's nobody's necessary fault. So um, I, I'm just just glad I have an opportunity to come back again. Definitely. All right, Oscar, I'm gonna throw it back to you. Yes, uh, I want to ask you a question about a uh, show that I'm also going to be attending, which you're going to be in a four-way match. In, uh, well, actually, the promotion is AWS. Uh, you're going to go against Mikey O'Shea, Jay Cabrera, and what's supposed to be the last um, appearance of Willie Mack, but uh, fortunately things happen, so uh, it looks like that's not gonna, it's not going to be his last appearance, but... Um, yeah, you're going to be in this four-way match at AWS in Southgate, California. Um, I want to ask you, what are you looking for in this match, uh, this four-way match? And um, and and I believe you have wrestled all of them before in championship wrestling from Hollywood, if I'm not mistaken, from, from your days over there. Um, yeah, what are you looking for in this match, in this four-way match, in this AWS match coming up? Uh, yeah, you are correct. I have I've worked all all of them before in uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Also, good old M1 Mach 1 Wrestling when that was around. Um, but uh, you know, I I I, I am looking forward to a, a big uh, bruiser four way. Um, I know I had a match similar to this in uh, FSW Future Stars of Wrestling in Vegas with um, was it Jay? No, was it Tito? Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever. But uh, uh, you know, it's, it's it's all four big guys. Everybody can work. Everybody can move. Um, and uh, I, I, you know what, you know, I don't even know if it announces it or it has been advertised as because I don't. I'm not even sure. Is it a four way tag? Like, like first of all, is it elimination. Uh, I'm on the Facebook. It's gonna be a four way matchup. It's it's a four way. So it was like a one first fall. first ten fall. Okay, okay. Yeah, first thing, I do kind of yeah. like those more. I do like those a little bit more because uh, elimination sometimes like kills the uh, kills the build. You know what I mean? Like there's a fall, and it, it can linger on too long. There's pros and cons to both. But uh, but no, I've, I you know this will be my second time working in AWS, and uh, I, I enjoyed yeah. it. I had a great time the first time. The first time actually it was against Willie Mack. It was uh, me and uh, uh, Tyler Black versus it was- uh, our. Uh, Freaking, Tyler Bateman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, South Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler Black. Um, uh, yeah, Tyler, Tyler Black. He's great younger. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, he stopped on down from FG, or NXT and, you know, took on Drake Younger before he became a referee. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it was versus Drake Younger and Willie Mack. And that was an awesome tag match. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to coming down there. I, I was looking forward to work with him in his last match. And, uh, you know, I hadn't heard. So, I, I, was, I was curious, though. So, has it been, like, announced or something that he's not leaving? Well, um, I guess uh, the WWE decided not to bring him in, I guess. So, um, yeah, so it was supposed to be his final match in AWS. He had his little PWG goodbye, and and um, this last Friday he had his goodbye at Santino Bros until the the news was broken yesterday that uh, 
uh, he's no longer. Uh, I guess uh, the WWE's not bringing him in. He had a statement. Uh, Willie Mack did say he was supposed to go to WWE, but uh, you know he was he was um, happy that they put him on the radar, and he still likes to continue working with DWG, Chapter Rest from Hollywood, AWS, and other promotions. So uh, yeah, I guess that's what happened. Mm-hmm. So the last you know what I, WWE kind of bring him in. <clears throat> so you know what that that I, that sucks, and you know I knew that was supposed to be the last match, so I was stoked to be a part of it. But I but I, I wonder, yeah. it just seemed like. I don't know. It just seems some of the pieces of the puzzle weren't weren't coming together, and you know, I'm to be quite honest, it sucks for Willie, and nothing, nothing, you know, due to to Willie, but I'm not too surprised that they did that because just the way that it was going, uh, I don't know. I just I just smelled something fishy about it. I was like, you know what? I don't think they're bringing Willie in. I think I, I don't know what they were doing with it because I know he he, was, he told me personally uh, one of the first people he called me up told me. And uh, but then him and Steen went to both camps, and how Steen got the big push and brought him right away. And Willie from the get go told me that they're bringing him in in October. And I just thought that was strange. Like, why the hell are they bring you in October instead of earlier? You know what I mean? Like especially Steen's leaving in August. Like what's what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. That's what he said. And, like just the longer it leaned on, it just kind of seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of updated information going. So I, I felt like they were going to kind of fucking just you know leave him hanging. So that it, it totally sucks for him, man. But. Uh, you know, he's a phenomenal talent, and, I mean, they brought him in, they checked him out, they know he's there. Like you said, he's on his radar, so it doesn't rule out anything. Um, it, it does suck the worst, though, because, like, the PWG goodbye was awesome. Um, yeah, it was real, real emotional, really, really touching, like, just an awesome thing. And it sucks to have that kind of goodbye and then not be gone. You, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, I, I don't know. It, it's like, like have this awesome, awesome, good, like, goodbye, like, last appearance, and then, like, you're going, you know, moving up in the world, and then to be there back. Like, it just, you know, it's almost like the same context of, like, get this awesome job so you fucking hate your boss and he's, like, the most evil dipshit and you get to quit the most awesome way and tell him, you know, to, to, to stick up his ass. And, then, and you come back the next day, like, hey, so I kind of need my job back. Like, can we work something? You know what I mean? Like, so it just sucks that he had such a great farewell and then now they, they freaking left him hanging. Like, that sucks. Yeah, definitely. And, um... Yeah, I was actually looking forward to this. I actually won free um, front row tickets for this, and uh, I was looking forward to it, and all of a sudden you get this. But the good thing about this is that I, I, I still get a chance to see Willie um, continue on, and, you know, and hopefully in the future he'll he'll uh, have an opportunity, you know? So Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, I mean, in either way, it won't affect the outcome of the match, like, as far as like whether like whether he was leaving or not, the match will still be just as good. So I mean, it's not like it's yeah. gonna be any better or worse. It'll still be you know a great match. So yeah, definitely. And so I can't wait for that. Um, that's like now four chances to see Brian Cage in the next two weeks for me. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not bad, right. not bad, <laughs> not bad, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. um, I'm gonna pass it back to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. All right, my next question also pertains to something that's upcoming for you. Uh, November 1st, at Dreamwave Wrestling, you're going to be in a triple threat match against Mr. Johnny Gargano and Matt Cage in a triple threat match for the Dreamwave Championship. And Dreamwave is a company that I really didn't know much of, and I'm actually starting to hear some buzz about it, and people are telling me to check it out, and I'm getting more into it. And you're going to be in this huge triple threat match, of course. And of last month, in uh, September, you actually went one-on-one with Matt Cage for the title in which you came up on the losing end. But now you're getting another shot. So just talk about this match coming up. And, you know, it's actually going to be a huge card. Uh, Brodus Clay is going to be on it, Joey and Candice. It's going to be a huge card. And I feel like Dreamwave is a company that doesn't get a lot of recognition. You know that's right. They, they put on awesome cards. Um, I was supposed. I, I feel bad too because I, I was supposed to have been booked on by them like so many times. They wanted me for this big like triple shot in June, and I couldn't because of the bodybuilding show. Then they wanted me in July, and I was hurt. And then they wanted me in that August show, and I wasn't sure if I'd still be hurt or not. So we decided to postpone it. Then I finally made it out there in September. September, I still wasn't 100. Uh, percent I don't think anybody really noticed, but um, you know, I saw the good match with Matt Cage. Yeah, I did come on losing the end, but that's only because he cheated, all right? I wasn't honest. Come on. Look, look at Matt Cage. You look at Matt Cage. You look at Brian Cage. You tell me which was the real Cage, all right? Matt Cage is <laughs> Brian Cage. No way. No way. We're, 
we're selling believability here, but uh, he's not he's not going over on Brian Cage. Um, but uh, no, no, I had an awesome time. And what was great about that show, I've never seen it done before in the, in the indies. Um, they brought me in completely unannounced and unknown to everyone. They didn't, they didn't advertise me. They didn't do anything. Like he wouldn't. Even, and you know, and and I was like, oh man, that sucks. This kind of ruins some stuff I wanted to do. But it, it made it kind of fun, like just because I, I appreciated the attempt. Like he wouldn't let me go to like you know Victoria, like Lisa's restaurant. He wouldn't let me go like anywhere else. And, like he brought me and I had to go straight to the venue and just sit there, stay backstage. I couldn't come up. I couldn't do the meet and greet or something. But, like because he wanted absolutely nobody to know that I was there. And uh, they had this little like mic segment where uh, Rose and I don't know who else you know, got like pit into a, a cage match like the following show. And uh uh then Matt Cage is trying to have his little celebration for winning the title and then he told him like, Oh wait, you're getting a cage match tonight, you know, as well and it was like, What? And then my music hit and I came out and to my surprise you know, most everybody knew who I was, was freaked out and uh it was just awesome because you don't get that kind of you know, unknown like watching Raw surprise, you know, in the Indies ever. Also because it, it kind of ruins, you know, uh, spending money to bring somebody in, like the, the point is to try to help draw some people or get attention to it. You know what I mean? Um, so the fact that he did that, I thought that was pretty rad, just because I, I don't know of that ever happening anywhere else. Um, so I, I, I kind of marked out a bit for that because I just thought that was really cool. But uh, another place too, they treat the rest is great there, man. They, they brought a bunch of food in. They have a masseuse there and stuff. I mean, just just a bunch of different nice things that you can really appreciate. But they are a really great company, man. They put a great card in. They bring in a lot of great talent. I mean, the roster is, is, you know, not subpar by any means. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it, it blows up and it does, you know, better and better as well. Yeah, that's, that, that's definitely an interesting story. And um, I'm looking forward to hopefully checking this out, hopefully getting to see this match oh, and oh. see, see, see the, the bigger cage come out on top this time. The real you know, too, also, <laughs> that, that's a, that, exactly, yeah, for sure. But, uh, and, and I had a twist that, too. I've never, I've never done any, I've never even freaking uh, locked up with Johnny Gargano before. So, uh, it will be our first, first ever encounter with him as well. So, that's an additional plus for sure. Oh, definitely. And it should be a great, Great, uh, great match, great event. Um, I rec, I, I'm starting to recommend Dream Wave because I'm just starting to find it out because it's kind of flying well under the radar, but I'm sure it'll get up there and it'll be recognized soon enough, just like a lot of indie companies are. All right, Oscar, I'm gonna toss it right back to you. Yes, uh, my next question I'd like to ask you about uh, um, a certain gentleman that that used to manage you. Um, Piercy Pringo the third, uh, aka Paul Bear, which who entered the Hall of Fame this past year's uh, WWE Hall of Fame. Um, I would like to ask you that um, that you know he managed you in the past. Um, I want to ask you that what kind of person was he um, in and outside the ring, and how do you feel that your name? It's a um, list of guys he managed, guys like Steve Austin and, and The Undertaker. Uh, you know what? It, it's 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 awesome. Uh, I remember the first time uh, he got brought in to manage myself and and, and Sean Rickard for uh, Natural Selection. I remember the, you know they were all cutting promos and they had a cut just a solo promo. They brought him over and you know I said okay you know put put us over basically. And man, he cut the fucking most amazing promo ever. I mean I was just like wow, like we get this guy with us. I mean. Not to mark out because it's freaking Paul Bear, that's rad. But I mean, just like the, the guy was unbelievably talented. Um, so good, so good. But um, personally, man, such a sweetheart, such a, such such a nice guy, man. He'd just be so supportive and then nice to everybody in the locker room, and you know, he, he didn't need to do that. And like, just 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 a, a great individual. Um, would, would would talk to me, you know, personal life stuff and bring me aside. He would he send me Facebook messages here and there just to catch up with. I mean, just just a great dude, man. And um. I mean, it, it was uh, unfortunate that he went, but I mean, I was actually just kind of, kind of glad for him because I know he was a, uh, a spiritual person, and uh, I know his wife had passed away. Uh, I don't know exact time before before him, so um, I feel like that he was not just like depressed or whatever, but you know, definitely I think maybe, maybe a little lonely, and I think that like he could find happiness in passing and enjoying her in the afterlife. Um, but um, but no, definitely, definitely a great guy. I was. 
glad to meet him even more. Glad to have him, you know, to be able to work with him, you know, to say that, oh, I got to manage Paul Bear and then, you know, even feud with him and Sean and stuff with exactly the guy that has such a great legacy, uh, you know, working with so many people. I mean, it was just, it was just awesome. So uh, I was thankful for it. And like I said, yeah, I can't say a bad thing about the guy. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny you mentioned uh, Sean Rick or, uh I just saw a tweet, like, right after he got released from the WWE that um, that they'll love to see a uh, natural selection reunion for once. Um, how possible can that be? Uh, it, it doesn't have to happen in Rick in Hollywood. It can happen anywhere. But how possible is uh, you and Ricker could team up once again and, uh, yeah, and, and you know, you have a little reunion well, there. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it's uh, it's entirely possible. I mean, the likelihood of it happening. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Sean's plans are. You know, I've, I've stayed in touch with him. I've talked to him since you know before his release and after his release. And um, I don't know if his plans are to fully stay out in Florida or what. I don't know that's where he's what he's doing right now. Uh, you know, Sean's a creative guy, uh, pretty smart individual too. Um, I know he does a lot of different like. Uh, trying to do acting stuff. I mean, he's making his little funny skits on YouTube that are great. I don't know if anybody ever saw his his uh, his little rock video where, where he takes the money. He makes this. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, with yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, it is so fucking good, so good. But uh, man, I, I can tell some Sean Ricker stories for sure too. But you know, he, he's he's a funny guy. I, I don't know exactly what his what his goals are now, or what he's going to do with wrestling wise or or uh, live, living situation wise. But obviously, it would be an easy thing you know, to have accomplished if, if it just all lined up, right? Um, and I don't know if it would happen in Hollywood. I mean, possibly. If not, I mean, there's plenty of other places it can happen. But, I mean, if, uh, if if Sean's willing and able, that's what he wants to do. And if he's in, in the area or if people are willing to bring us both in, I mean, yeah, it would definitely happen. It would be, it would be a fun thing for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess uh, we'll just hope and... and wait and see what happens if uh, we're going to see a natural selection uh, reunion, <laughs> you can say. I, I, uh, I still got my natural selection trunk, so, I mean, it's possible. It's possible, yeah. Uh, never say never, and you can say. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'll pass it back to you, Tom. All right. So the next question I have, actually, is from my buddy Eddie on Twitter. He sent me kind of a lengthy message, but just to get the overall feel, he has a question for you. He says, with being such a big guy but such an agile guy, did you ever um, ever want to basically combine these styles, you know, a big, rough and tough guy, but then you can show off that you can do moonsaults and a 619, and you can do all these different things. Did that just come about, or was it something that you always kind of had in mind? Well, you know, I wasn't uh... – I wasn't that big of a guy. Which a lot of people thought I was always a big guy. Like like when I first started off, I was always a big. I'm like just because, you know, I was in shape and weighed like two fifteen or whatever. I was like, I'm not a big guy. I'm just a lot bigger than the guy that I'm wrestling. It's 150 pounds. Like so, you know, a lot of indie guys are out of shape or you know, very you know, short or, or underweight. So obviously that makes me look like a monster compared to them. But you put me like in WWE, I'm like I'm gonna be like the average dude or a small guy. So I, and I wasn't as agile at first, and I just wanted to learn a lot of these stuff just just to be more versatile because I knew that I wasn't that big of a guy in, in retrospect. Um, regardless, I would probably never really do it to a lot of the guys I was working with at that time when I was breaking in, but I wanted just to have the ability to do so and uh, and just to be more versatile. Um, I know the three people I really wanted to emulate in the ring, like my top three, were uh, 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 Chris Canyon. Chris Jericho and uh, Chris Benoit, and uh, that uh, I, and I've gotten comparisons to all three, so I mean, that, that's a feather in my cap for sure. But um, so you know, I, I want one of the intensity, the the technical, the 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 move set and the originality of it, like from K and two and and uh, the agileness and the charisma and stuff from Jericho. Like so, I thought the hybrid would be perfect. And um, anyway, so I developed this. Uh, uh, that, that 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 style a little bit, you know, when I was smaller. <laughs> Sorry, I just switched off my headset. But uh, uh, I developed that moveset when I was smaller and, and just kept it, you know, as I began getting bigger and bigger and getting more size. So uh, and that was one thing, too. I always wanted to still be an athlete. I never wanted to be, uh, you know, just a big bruiser or whatever. 
And like some people say, like, oh, oh you're a bodybuilder? Like, no, 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 I'm a pro wrestler. I have to be a bodybuilder. I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm trying to be a wrestler. I was like, that's, that's the big difference there. You know, I'm, I was like, I'm, not, I'm the real total package. I'm not Lex Luger. So that, that's how that all kind of came about. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's one of the things that sets you apart is just, you know, there, you're this big guy, but then you move like a cruiserweight, and people are just like, wait a minute, holy shit. Like, what is this guy doing? Like, this guy's insane. You know, I still see people on Twitter and all these social media outlets still commenting on stuff that you, you know, did months and months ago. You know, the moon saw off the top rope, the 619, and doing all these different things. And people are like, holy crap. Like, why why isn't this guy on my TV right now this second? And I know that's <laughs> how versatile you are, that you're this, you know, big guy that could lift you up for a suplex for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, even more. But then he can also hit you with a Hurricane Rana out of nowhere. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah, that, that's what I, uh, you know, just as I started to get bigger and bigger, I, I, I wanted to keep doing that because I knew that set me apart. Like I said, I, I didn't want to be a one-trick pony. I didn't want to have just one style. Um, I wanted just to be able to do everything just because I feel like those are the, uh, you know, the guys are, are just more skilled overall. And I, I, I didn't want to be labeled one thing. I wanted to be able to do everything. Even if I never did it, I wanted to be able to do it all. And, but I got, I knew that was, um, and I had a plus to it uh, just because of, of my size. And obviously nobody else was, was doing that because you know, it made it out of the future because I'm already kind of a, 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 a spectacle, for lack of a, <laughs> a better word, I guess, uh, because of my size on Mandy's. And then, exactly, then, then you see, my my ability and uh, versatility and agility on top of that, you're like, holy shit, this guy's not just a regular run the mill, you know, big guy. I'm like, dude, he can do it all. So that's kind of like my extra selling point now that's helped get me over, get me noticed, you know, uh, establish more fans, get got more bookings uh, because of that. So um, it's something I want to keep doing. Uh, I don't try to throw, throw it in there a lot, you know, a lot of places too, like some small shows I won't do a lot because I think if I did it all the time, I would lose the specialness of it. And also, because of my size, like, I mean, I try to keep it somewhat realistic. If I'm fighting with something small, it's like, okay, if, if we're in a street fight right now, am I going to pick this guy up and crush him? Or am I going to climb up on the mailbox and jump off on him? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, there's really no reason to do something just, just to do it. So, you know, PWG, I throw it a little more just because obviously that's, that's that's the crowd and what, what they're looking for. But uh, I, I, I try to save stuff sometimes, not just throw it away all the time. But uh, yeah, I definitely need to do one thing to help me stand out from our size in every match. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Very versatile. You never know what's going to hit you next. So that's what you're all about. You got to get your shit in. Yeah, well, you know, too, going back to uh, the one Vila Canyon as well, since he was one of my, uh, uh, my, my, my idols and, and became one of my good friends, I, I was a huge fan of him because of all his innovative offense. Every time I saw him wrestle, I'm like, whoa, I never saw him move before. And I always, you know, mocked out about him. That was awesome. So that was like my original goal, too, in wrestling was, I mean, I always want to have the match of the night, as I'm sure every wrestler does or should. But my goal would be like, okay, if at least one fan can leave tonight and say that, you know, to me, like, oh, man, that one movie did I never saw before. Oh, that one move was awesome. That one spot was great. Or, oh, I can't believe you can do that. Or I didn't know you could do this. Like that just that, like, one, like, shocking move that I would do, that would, like, you know, meet, meet, meet my requirement of what I wanted to do out there was to go out there and at least, you know, do some one thing new or surprising one fan that they haven't seen before or wouldn't expect to see from me. So um, that's kind of, like, where I got the whole getting my shit in. And before that was, like, the multi-move Paragon and, and you know, just, just the homage to Canyon, of the innovative offense. So he's kind of, you know, do something new or inventive. Oh, no question, no question. All right, Oscar, I'm going to toss it back to you. Yes, um, but before I ask him my question, I want our listeners to know, uh, uh, if you guys have any questions for Brian Cage, I will do it right now because we're not going to have him on too long. Um, yeah, the number will be 760-454-1107, or you can tweet us at Wrestling Head. Uh, like I said, I will do it right now because we're not going to have them on too long. So, um, yeah, yeah, so just do it. <laughs> um, my, my final question I'd like to ask you, um, you've done a lot of things in your career. You've been on TNA. You're 
you're going to be on Lucha Underground in, in, in you know in the, future, in the near future. Um, for you, Brian Cage, uh, what's the next goal you need to accomplish that you have yet yet accomplished yet? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm excited with with uh, where where we could be going with Lucha Underground. Um, I also will be doing stuff with AAA as well. That I'm looking forward to. Um, I said I, I've done pretty much. Just about everything I, I had hoped and wanted to. I mean, when I uh, going back to Chris Canyon again, I got to wrestle in, in uh, my hometown in a fed I used to run called the MWF, and I remember, you know, that was right, right at the beginning of my career. But uh, after having that match, I remember I could I tell myself like, dude, my wrestling career could be over tomorrow, and I would be satisfied just getting this kind of a unbelievable match to you know come to fruition. But um, yeah, I wanted to get kind of signed to WWE by the time I was 24. I did that. Um, you know, I, I've done a lot. I've been pretty satisfied and happy with my career. The one thing that I haven't done, the only thing that's alluded to me that I haven't done that I've always wanted to that I think is like kind of like the creme de la creme, so to speak, is uh, go to Japan. That's the only thing I haven't done, and that would be the one thing left remaining for me to have uh, uh, you know, completed my bucket list, if you will, of wrestling. Yeah, I would like to see you in Japan if you have the opportunity, like New Japan, uh, All Japan, Noah, or even Wrestle One. Um, yeah, I hope you got, I get to see you on the promotions. Uh, what you know, these days in the future. So, you know, so, I uh, understand like you know the, the the place out of all of them, but I mean, I I wouldn't care. I just want to go to any uh, any Japan place to be brought in, and um, and the way I look at it with that too is because you know, especially with WWE, everybody wants to go there, but. If you look at a lot of guys that WWE signs, they only sign the best talent. How they sign tons of people who aren't even talent. They're just nobodies that look kind of good. That they think, oh, maybe he'll do all right. So realistically, like, me trying to say, oh, well, signing WWE is an accomplishment. Like, I don't know. It, to me, it doesn't sound that like a you know great of an accomplishment anymore. But everyone who goes to Japan, you know, usually is one of the top notch you know workers, one of the best workers. But to me, I feel like that's like a bigger a bigger accomplishment, so to speak, and uh, I would love to do it. So many people have told me that would be great there because of my style, because of the agility, because of my size and look, you know, that it would just do do wonders over there. But, you know, and I've tried talking to some people before, and, um, you know, it, it's gone well, but obviously it's still yet to happen, and that would be the one thing that I would uh, I would love to happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll see, and hopefully in the future we'll see you in Japan, man. And, um yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, go ahead, Tom. Uh, give me your final question, man. Yeah, my final question, and I'm actually going to mix this in with a question I got from Twitter, from Mike on Twitter. Um, kind of going away from wrestling, you're big into nutrition and fitness and all that, and Mike asked, how do how do I get as big as Brian Cage? But what, uh, what advice would you give to people trying to, you know, gain muscle mass and trying to stay healthy and, you know, just kind of be at a peak performance uh, physically wise? Uh, I mean, the the best, like, one word answer is consistency. Consistency is the key. Every diet and workout, you know, uh, system, whether it's a P90X, whether it's going to the actual weight room, um, you know, with, with stricken Tybo, whatever the case may, it may be, everything works, man. Everything works to how well, you know, it obviously changes. And also, too, everybody's body's different. Uh, but it's just about consistency. Everybody wants it now. Everybody wants it now. Everybody wants to look good tomorrow. Everybody wants to be jacked tomorrow. They want to, you know, get ripped, whatever the case may be. But every everybody wants it now. Like, I mean, I've been I've been at it for, what, I've been listening to weights the hardcore going after, like, freaking for, like, 11 years now, like, over a decade. So, I mean, obviously, I didn't get like this in one day. Um, I mean, I graduated high school at 154 pounds. And I, it wasn't like a, a ripped 154 either. So I, mean, I definitely put my time in. But, I mean, if anybody ever sees me on the road, too, I always pack and prep all my meals. Um, I, mean, I get I get super freaking uh, meticulous with, like, weighing out everything, protein powder, protein powder fiber, pre-workouts. I mean, all my, my food, my veggies, everything. I don't think you have to get like that. You don't have to be that, you know, over the top with it. But, um, uh, I mean, like I said, go back to it. It's just consistency, man. It's 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 getting into a program that works for you, so wherever the workout is or the exercise is, and just sticking with it. You know, don't just do it for thirty days or six days or even nine days. Do it forever. Um, it, it's really a lifestyle change. A lot of people want to like reach a goal and then they stop. Like, oh, I, I reached my goal, I'm done. 
and then they wonder why they regress or why they, you know, lose muscle or, or put on weight again or whatever the case may be because anything that you're doing to reach, you know, some sort of fitness level, if you stop doing it, of course you're going to lose it. You know, if you're if you're a football player and then also you stop practicing, you don't play football for a couple of years, obviously you're going to regress. You know, if you know a foreign language, you never use it, obviously it might regress a little bit. Like, I mean, fitness is the same way. I mean, once you've kind of changed it, you know, and succeeded in whatever you're trying to succeed at, Obviously, if you take any sort of step back, you know, you're probably, your body's going to take a step back, too. But, um, you know, it's a consistency in doing everything you're doing. Always plan and prepare. If you're not, you know, if you're not planning to, or preparing, then you're, 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 you're planning to, to fail. So, um, you know, just make smart choices, healthy choices. Um, a lot of people, you know, with the same thing, will diet for a couple of days and they fall off the wagon and, you know, eat this or that. You don't have to go crazy and cook all your own food all the time and, and, and weigh it all out and stuff like I do. But, I mean, you can, you know, make smart choices about where you're going out to eat as well and, and what you're getting. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just being conscious, making conscious effort. So a lot of people just don't have the willpower or, or discipline or desire to really do it. And that, that's why a lot of people fail at it. Yeah, really, really good, really good advice, actually. I, You know, you hear, you hear a lot of things on, you know, like bodybuilding.com and, one of the main things people just say is eat and eat and eat. And, you know, that's one thing I've seen missing is consistency is just keeping up with it. And that's really sound advice. So uh, yeah, yeah, got exactly. a Mike on Twitter for the question, and I'm sure now he's going to start bulking up and start getting some swole on. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was 150 pounds, and uh, I, for like a year and a half or so after high school, um, you know, I was I was I was a weight gainer like a couple times a day at least. I was you know eating breakfast. I I wasn't even, I remember at first I just wasn't drinking soda or eating fast food. I need everything else though, and uh, uh, eat, eat as much as I could. But same thing, would try to make healthy choices. Would be protein bars, you know, try to get like chicken meals or whatever. I was not eating as healthy as I am now, but I was eating a lot, trying to eat as healthy as possible, and I just stuck with it. And like for about a year and a half or so, I put on a lot of weight. A lot of it was excess weight that I didn't need, but I or didn't want, but I kind of needed that way to, to get me up, you know, to put on size, to, to cut back down. And you, you kind of go back and forth. But, but exactly, people were like, I can't gain any weight. And I'm like, oh, you know, I snack all the time. And if you really break it down, they're really not eating that much. Or even they do, you know, maybe they, they try to eat a lot for a, a week or maybe even a month. And they're like, well, you gave them much weight. I'm like, well, that, did you expect to gain 50 pounds in a month? So that wasn't going to happen if that's what you're going for. Like, you got to keep going, you know. So if you're eating... 3,500 calories a day for, for three weeks and then stop and go back in 1,500 calories. Well, of course you're not going to need any size. So, I mean, it's just consistency, man. you got to stick with it. Very good advice. Very good. Appreciate it. And I'm sure all the listeners appreciate it as well. All right, Oscar, I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. Um, Brian, I'd like to say thank you once again for doing this. And um, hopefully you'll do it again in the future. But uh, before we let you go, um, do you want to uh, give out your plugs out uh, before we let you go? Sure, man. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Mr. GMSI underscore BH. Uh, you know, I've been consistently 300 fan or yeah, 300 followers under my tweets. Every time we get followers, it, it, it's been like 300 different for the last I don't know, like thousand tweets and, and followers. I'm trying to break that. I'm trying to break that and get get more followers and tweets. So people who are on there, follow me so I can break that that record. But uh, uh, Mr. G must not underscore BK for Twitter. Brian Cage on Instagram. Brian Cage button on Facebook. Uh, ProWrestlingTees dot com backslash Brian Cage for uh, all your Brian Cage merchandise and T-shirts. Um, and Matt, you guys a question before we go? Just because we talk so much about PWG, I'm just curious now. What are you guys' predictions for this uh, this week in the show? <laughs> All right, I'll start off right here. Not not because you're on the show, but I'm saying you're gonna go over uh, Uha Nation. <laughs> Kyle Riley still keeping the title. Uh, the, the world's cutest tag team are still keeping their tag titles. Um, Trevor Lee over Adam Cole. Um, um, I did say Bobby Fish was going over Cedric, but I'm going to change my mind. I'm going Cedric over Bobby Fish. And um, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? No. Yeah, Fox and, AC, uh, Fox and ACH versus Fox. 
Oh, yeah, Bucks. I'm going for Bucks on that one. All right. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Uh, good prediction. Definitely that first one. That's yeah. pretty solid. Uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking Brian Cage over Uha Nation. Um the the incoming debut is not gonna pick up a victory. Gotta go with the, <laughs> the veteran Brian Cage. But see I'm I'm over here on the East Coast. I'm all the way in New York, so I don't get to see P W G live. I actually just received Bola in the mail. So but you know, I pick up P W G's whenever I can. So to me it doesn't matter about the results because it's always a great show no matter what. So I don't I don't care who wins and loses. It could be you know, it could be twenty minute draws for each match and I would still be happy. Well I thought our draws are kinda of, draws are kinda of weak, but no, I get what you're saying. Did you get uh, did you get all three guys to Bola? Yeah. Uh I'm looking I'm looking forward to Bola, you know. It was probably one of the more stacked Bolas in in history, and you know, with all with all the shipping and stuff, and it just got here, so probably this week is going to be dedicated to just watching Bola. It's going to be Bola probably, week over here. Probably the biggest Bola. It, man, it was the biggest Bola. But I tell you what, that 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 three nights of wrestling was, was nonstop, just incredible. But to me, the like most memorable moment maybe was the freaking slow mo spot in the freaking eight or ten man tag on night three. Uh, and actually, it was Tommaso Ciampa's idea. I want to throw that out there because I was I I thought it was Chuck Taylor's. I'm sure most people have, probably think it was Chuck Taylor, but Tommaso was the one that put that spot together, and it was fucking incredible. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in wrestling. It was so hilarious, so so amazing, and uh, I just want to throw that out as is probably the biggest highlight I thought from that weekend. Just because I mean, there's there's some just just phenomenal wrestling, you know, fights of wrestling all night long, every night. But that was something I didn't expect to see, and I thought was was just fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you know that, that and yeah, you know, Peter G is probably the only company to this day where I still look back and I still buy old shows. You know, recently with, within the uh, past couple of months, I actually just got Seven because I heard so many good things about it, and you know, I checked it out, and then that's when I saw your debut, and I thought you actually debuted before that, but then I was like. Oh wait, this is the first show he was on, so good to see uh little little smaller Brian Cage on there. There was a little <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't super sized Brian Cage, but uh uh, you know, and I remember it's funny to people see him go, Man, look at him now I'm like, Yeah, but that was that was freaking over four years ago. I mean, like you look at me four year, four years or so prior to that, I'm small too. I'm like I've constantly progressed. There was well I could bring up two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven I was I was looking like a pile of crap because I was hurt and uh, I was out of the gym for like eight months. And I was also uh, just like a super, it was a bad time. I was super depressed. I was super broke. It was just a bad year for me. And uh, that, that attributed to everything. But people take that picture and take a picture of me today and act like it happened within a week. Like, oh, look what happened. He broke his, you know, just doubled in size. And look, I'm like, hey, it wasn't like that, man. Was, besides that year, I've progressed like every year, every month. You know, I've, I've tried to progress since, you know, 2002. So. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much happened that way, but uh, but awesome. Well, uh, yeah, this, this weekend show should be great, man. Uh, you guys, thank you for having me on the show. Thanks for the predictions, and uh, I guess I'll mind with you out there. But yeah, yeah, Brian, I actually got a message from uh, my friend. He uh, he says that there's one more match I left. It was uh, Tommaso Ciampa against Fifth Music, and uh, yeah, you don't actually yeah, on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, wait, there's another match too, because I thought Busek. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're, you're picking Busek over on that one, huh? No, I'm picking uh, Champa on that one. Oh, you take Champa, yeah, yeah. I, I would yeah. probably go with that one too. I would think so. Just he's getting, uh, he's he's gotten a little more over. Uh, I thought his match yeah. with Elgin as well was one of the more uh, memorable matches from from the Bola tournament as well. I thought they did a really good job. Yeah. So I, I think he's finally starting to get more over and break out a little bit. So I would I would imagine I'd, I'd see him going over this weekend as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, Brian. It was nice talking to you again. I will see you Friday. And Tom, remember, uh, call Comcast. Say you want L Ray Network. Do it for Brian Cage. And and That's not right, for yeah. Brian. There's there's other talent in Lucha Underground that you need to check out, especially some guy named Prince Pumba. You will really like that guy. Trust. <laughs> me. Yeah, indeed. I, indeed. I definitely, I definitely will. And uh, thanks, Brian, once again. It was definitely. A great talk with you. All right, guys.
Take care. Have a good night. All right. Have a good night, Brian. That's it. Later. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the fucking machine himself, Brian Cage. That was a great ass interview. I really enjoyed that yeah, one. That, that was a hell of an interview. I mean, one of the most talkative and insightful guys that I think we've had on this show. I mean, just the different things he was talking about in these different companies and going through all the different stuff. I mean, man, he just had so much information just flowing out. It was it was great. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's take a little short, and I mean it, short commercial break. And uh, I guess we'll come back, talk about what happened on Raw last night. And, uh, yeah, we'll be right back. And, like I said, it's going to be a short commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is Ring of Honor Superstar Nigel McGuinness, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio Show. So stay tuned, you wankers. All right, you wankers. We're back already. Like I said, it wasn't going to be a short commercial. I wasn't bullshitting. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, we're going to be talking about Raw. You, any of our listeners, you can join the conversation. You always can call the 760-454-1107. Or you can tweet us at WrestleMania. Give us your thoughts of Raw. Um, Tom, I know last night me, you, and Skits were on a wrestling chat with uh, Mr. Matthew Grant from the Weekly Wrestling Podcast. We give our opinions from Raw. Um, I said it was all right. It didn't change. I I still think it was an all right Raw. Um, What was your thoughts, uh, Tom, from last night's Raw? Um, yeah, like you said, we were on a wrestling chat last night with Mr. Matthew Grant, and, you know, it was kind of the same thing that we said the week before, is that there were a couple of good things happened, but for the most part, it was kind of like the same thing that we've been seeing, um, nothing really different, nothing really exciting, um, the only thing that was really set in stone was, uh, we found out it's going to be Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose inside Hell in a Cell at, uh, at Hell in a Cell. Uh, you know, Dean Ambrose picked up the victory in the contract on a pole match, and then it's going to be Orton versus Cena, which, you know, we, we definitely need to see another Orton-Cena match. I mean, the first the first 98 times that we've seen it, that wasn't enough. We need to see it a 99th time. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said in Wrestle Chat, I try to watch Raw, but at the same time, I was looking through my phone because uh, St. Louis Rams was playing Monday Night Football last night against the 49ers. Unfortunately, uh, Austin Davis threw an interception in the end, but oh well. Um, <laughs> we got Mr. W.H. Skitz joining the party. What's going on, Skitz? What's going on, gentlemen? Not much, man. We just had a great interview with Mr. The Fucking Machine himself, Brian Cage, man. You missed out, buddy. Yeah. I actually uh, got to listen to it. I didn't want to mess up, uh, you know, the uh, rhythm that you guys had going on. So I just listened to the to the interview there. Um, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, it was pretty cool, though. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, we were just out here talking about what happened Raw last night. Um it just like I said, we said on Wrestle Chat, you know, I, I thought it was all right, um, not not, a, not the best Raw, but uh, you know, I thought it was I, good. I, I thought it was good. I don't know, you know, what uh, people are like looking for, but uh, it definitely was a good Raw. Um, yeah. But I, I I don't know how. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I don't know how you can can. I mean, maybe everybody's expectations have just gone down. <laughs> But I don't understand how that's a good raw. You know, number so, one, it's so three hours. What was bad about that's, it? That, that's way too long. What was bad about it? There was so much ridiculousness. First of all, the contract on a pole match that happened last night wasn't that good of a match. You know, of course there was going to be interference because of course there needs to be. But at least Dean Ambrose won. Happy about that. But there was just a lot of, you know, filler stuff. 
And you know, we saw we saw the, the total divas come out with the, what's her name. I mean, why do we oh, oh. even talk about the divas when we know the divas aren't that great? Yeah, and see, I I can't even remember half of the stuff that happened just because it was so long. And so I, I thought long it was long. good. I definitely thought it was good. Um, I thought it was a, it was cool. You know, just like I said last night, I thought it was a, I thought it was good. I mean, I didn't see like nothing awful about the show. I mean, just like I said, the only thing that I had an issue with, which, you know, everybody has a fucking problem with it every week, is the the fucking divas. So why even mention the divas when we know the divas aren't going to put on? Yeah. And it, it, it's these stupid guest hosts that, you know, WWE considers to be celebrities, you know, Todd Chrisley was on there, and at least, you know, Todd Chrisley was in the audience, and, you know, they did a short little thing with him, but then you had that, I can't even remember her name. What was her name? That I mean, that I don't know, because I turned. The That's where you turn. Oh, yeah, like I that, said. That, like, that is when I go to the bathroom, you know, get get my piss break in, uh, get some food, get some drinks, you know, and then I come back, and hopefully it's over. You know, I just Like I said, I mean... Last night I said that Raw was different. I mean, when's the last time you seen the Usos, you know, actually go against John Cena and Dean Ambrose and Stardust and Goldust? You know, that was different. Yeah, it you know? was. It was some. Yeah, you know, there was some good matches, and you know, I did comment on that. Is that, you know, the the tag match and um, Dolph Ziggler that's, and Randy Orton? Yeah, was that's a, not was a, good, was a good and match. Randy Orton, and uh, even, even Jack Swagger and Seth Rollins, all three of exactly. those matches got time. And they were pretty, pretty long matches for raw standards. But it was exactly it was, that was that was really the highlight for me. You know, I mean, another it. thing, a lot of people shit on the whole Rusev Big Show thing. I mean, they got a little time in or whatever. I mean, you never know. For some reason, WWE probably was gonna make a big mistake by having Rusev lose. But of course, you got to win. So hope I don't know what's gonna happen next with that. Seamus and Miz thing is, you know, you got to give them their time. So, yeah, and it is what it is. You know, that whole thing with Seamus and Miz, we talked about it last night. The only really positive or the good stuff about that match was Damian Sandow, Mizdow. He was, you know, we talked about it last night, how funny he was, how he's embracing that character, and he just makes it so much better. Yeah, and I'm looking at the whole card right now, and everything was that you mentioned good was good. There's only one thing that you complained about, Raw, and that was the Divas. And that was, you know, the well, little I, six. Well, I can't even uh, remember what happened I, most of it. Actually, I wanted to comment on that Rusev um, Big Show match, and it's something that I kind of noticed that I forgot to mention last night. You know, the way they're portraying Rusev, I know they're making him a heel and stuff, and, you know, he's getting booze and Lana's getting heat too. But the way they're booking him sometimes makes him, like, almost like a face. And last night I, I rewatched it, and it kind of uh, it kind of solidified um, what I'm saying because, you know, after the match, Rusev's on the outside minding his own business, and then Big Show and Mark Henry, you know, a combined weight of over 1,000 pounds... Mm-hmm. Are gonna, are gonna well, double team Rusev, and Rusev, well, you know, takes these guys on. This this is something that a face, you know, should do is you know get double teamed uh, by two I big guys, saying? and then he overcomes the odds like John Cena. It's just not a way to book a heel. I definitely get what you're saying, but they both have lost like twice to fucking Rusev, and they're fucking. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they're frustrated, especially Mark Henry. And I don't think Mark Henry is going to be a face for a long time. We had this conversation last night about, you know, Mark Henry and and Big Show going back back and forth his faces in the uh, hills. I mean, we only talk about that today again. But it's basically USA versus uh, Russia, if anything. Yeah. 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 You scared. Mark Henry is going to somehow turn his back on Big Show, and, and we're going to see once again a Big Show and Mark Henry feud down the road. We just saw maybe a year ago or two. 
And um, after Rusev, I don't know who he's going to feud next. After Big Show, that's going to be very interesting. Um, Maybe Sheamus for the U.S. title. That could be the next um, feud for him. Um, But there's one thing I want to go back to. I want to go back to that Randy Orton Dolph Ziggler match, which was the match of the night. And uh, and I said last night on wrestling chat that you know that finish with Randy Orton, how he lifted up Ziggler and 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 how he did the RKO, that's another highlighted moment from Randy Orton's great career in the WWE. I mean, that that moment should be should be added to a video collection. Which when when he when he enters the Hall of Fame, they gotta post they gotta put that on there. So Shit's gonna be added so probably to his fucking Titantron, if anything. Titantron, no, it doesn't matter. Titantron or Hall of Fame vi- uh, video package, that's gotta be added. Just like the whole uh, one, like like, like how you get that RKO on um, Evan Bourne, that has to be added on there too. And the CM Punk yeah. one too, that's gonna be added as well. So, yeah, re- that's something we're never gonna forget. So, you know, th- that's that's a, that's a big highlight in his whole career. Uh, for Randy Orton, so um, yeah, I give those two props. I, even though I'm not big fans of either of those guys, I give them props. They, they, they put up or, a good match. Orton's been night. killing the game lately. I think Orton's been killing the game, and just like I said, that tension between him and Seth Rollins is going to build. And I'm hoping to see these guys go at it. Uh, hopefully down the road, maybe like uh, uh, WrestleMania or something. Just like I mentioned yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm actually thinking right now. That's possibly a WrestleMania match because uh, uh, you know Randy Orton could be turning face pretty soon. I'm not right now, right now, but I don't even see him turning face. I see him. I see both of them as hills, just trying to get attention from the authority. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I re- maybe. But one thing I wanted to comment on is um, Randy Orton. I would say the past couple months, it's definitely shined a lot. But, and even going back to WrestleMania, when Randy Orton needs to be, he is, he's just, he's a ring general. He controls matches. He makes you pay attention. And, you know, he, he's definitely way better suited as a bad guy than as a face. He's definitely, there's more character to him to when he is a heel than when he's a face. But the guy can always consistently go out there with the right guy and just have great matches. And it doesn't have to be like a pay-per-view. It could just be like a Raw, like it was last night. And he can go out there and just have great matches. And he does, you know, his heel things. He does a little, he touches the ear, kind of like the Hulk Hogan. And he, he yells at the audience. And as much as people crap on him for being, you know, boring or whatever, that's not really a reflection on him. He can always I've never, I've never seen Randy Orton as a boring guy. I don't know where people are coming from. Yeah, that's just me. I don't, I don't that's think a... he's a boring guy. It's just the way that WWE, I think, had his face character for a couple of years was a little bit stale and boring. You know, it was, it just, it wasn't a reflection on Randy Orton. It was just kind of more on WWE and how they were booking him. You know, so. Yeah. But, he, you know, he can. it just proves that he can still consistently go out there and have great matches and control the matches. And, you know, when he got in there with a guy like Roman Reigns, who is still, Roman Reigns is still pretty green. You know, he's not a developed talent like Ziggler or other guys on the roster. But Randy Orton kind of carried that match and, you know, led Roman Reigns into having a I would say an okay match with them, a pretty good match with them. So it just still shows that Randy Orton can go out there and do uh, yeah. great things in the ring. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that down the future. But Hell, Hell, Hell in a Cell, uh, Sunday, October 26th, uh, this is the updated card. We got Nikki Bella going against Brie Bella. The loser has to be the winner's personal assistant for 30 days. I don't think nobody cares. But that's yeah. what happened. Uh, the Miz versus Sheamus for the United States title. So it looks like Miz is switching from the IC title to the U.S. title. Um, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins in the Hell in a Cell, and John Cena versus Randy Orton in the Hell in the Hell, Hell in a Cell, and matches that may be getting booked: uh, Ziggler versus Cesaro for the IC title. So we'll see what happens with that. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but this is one thing, I, like I said in Wrestle Chant yesterday, I'm hoping that the last match would be uh, Jeff Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. I think they deserve to get the last spot for the John Cena versus Randy Orton. We've seen John Cena and Randy Orton so many times. I believe we even saw him in a cell match for the WWE Championship and now it's going to be the two. So, the, if they put that last, why would they do it? doesn't make no fucking sense. Why? Because it's John Cena? I mean... Look what you guys got now. You got Jeff Rollins and Dean Ambrose. It's probably your feud of the year you have going on here. And if you're planning to end it, this is a good way to end it. Have the, the last match. And I'm pretty well, sure that match is by the looks of the from what I'm from like what I saw, like they're calling both of the main events. So who knows which one is the actual last match? Yeah. Well, like I said, I think John, I mean, not John Cena, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins should have the last spot because they had they had I, a great rivalry. I agree. One I of the best rivals I've seen in years. So this has got to be the last. That has to be the Plus, last match. Their few means it, it. It actually means something. It actually matters. Like yeah, the whole uh, John Cena and Randy Orton just came out of nowhere. So it's gonna be like a one day feud, you know? Yeah. So yeah, or like a week it, feud. This is a classic. I'm already saying it's a classic rivalry. Like you have W two K fifteen coming out with all these um, um, modes, like classic rivalry modes going on. You know, this is another one right here. So maybe we'll do yeah. something like that in future video games. <laughs> See Jeff Rollins and Dean Ambrose. <laughs> so um, uh, I got some uh, more news uh, to throw out there on NXT. Uh, their next uh, big show is. Uh, it talks about they're going to have it on December 11th, their next NXT takeover. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully uh, they set a date soon and they you heard, announce it. Yeah, you heard about those rumor matches are, are planned for that event, right? I saw um, Kenta and Devitt against the uh, Ascension. I saw, I saw, uh, I think, Zane versus uh, Neville. Only two matches I think I remember off top of the head. Yeah, I also like. I also read that possibly a triple threat for the NXT Women's Title would be Charlotte against Sasha Banks and Bailey, um, Lucha Dragons defend their titles against the Von Villains, and uh, I also think they said possibly the debut of Kevin Steen on that show. So, That'd hey, who sweet. knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, let's see if all is. Rumor or his rumor card actually does happen. So, but uh, well, it looks like it, a scene in um, Adrian Neville is like very possible, and the whole uh, you know Day Otami and uh, Finn Balor against the Ascension looks like another possibility will happen as well. So, I, I see that more likely. Those two matches will happen. Yeah, you know it's it's still uh, still a couple months away, but. Even w- when rumors get started, I always I always enjoy the NXT uh, live specials that they do. They make it such a big deal. I mean, when I watch that, I honestly get a bigger feel for that than when I watch like a WWE regular pay per view. I mean, it just it feels just like a big deal when you watch those things. It's like when they first come in and do the pre show. And, you know, there's all the fans outside and you're just, you know, they're hyping up everything and they have, you know, good video packages on, you know, each match that's upcoming. You know, it's not just the main event because the video package, like each individual match gets a video package. And I think it just speaks to what NXT is right now. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens there. I mean, Sami Zayn versus Adrian Neville one-on-one is probably going to be insane. It's going to be incredible. Um, and I'm looking forward to the other matches on the card, too. You know, triple threat match for the NXT women's title should be uh, very good as well. You know, uh, seeing, I'm, uh, I'm thinking yeah. Charlotte's going to have to lose that because, you know, there's been a lot of talks of her coming up to the main roster. And and another thing that I read, uh, there's talks about the Ascension, you know, coming up soon, too, because, their toys are actually uh, set to, you know, be released soon. And, you know, which I can always talk to my boy uh, Dave 
uh, Gomez uh, from uh, the wrestling guy store because he knows the deal of what toys are coming in. So. Yeah, yeah, and I re- I think after this whole feud with a day with Tommy, I think the Ascension are probably going to be bumped up, um, which is good. You know, I don't know how WWE is going to treat them. You know, they probably <clears throat> don't care about a lot of tag teams, as, you know, you can see on the main roster. I mean, you have the I don't Usos. care what nobody says. Stardust is over. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah they're right. over, and, you know, the Usos are in there doing their thing, but overall the tag team division isn't really, you know, what it could be. So yeah. we'll see. Maybe maybe with the addition of the Ascension, we'll get a better tag division, but we'll have to see. And like I said, NXT is shaping up to be, uh, to be great down the line with the additions of Atami and uh, Finn Balor and, you know, Kevin Steen coming in and, of course, there's just there's too much talent down there. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, something that we actually uh, mentioned uh, yesterday: uh, Justin Roberts getting released. Uh, there's been lots of talks uh, from different fans, uh, you know, writing stuff to certain uh, websites saying that. Uh, during the show, Justin Roberts and Michael Cole were like getting into it, and after the show, they they had uh, exchanged words. Uh, does that have something to do with Roberts not getting the, you know, uh, resign? Is there tension backstage? Is there more to it? Um, who knows? Uh, but what are you guys' thoughts on the the whole Justin Roberts well, situation? Well, I read that a fan that attended the show said that they sit on argument between Justin Roberts and um, Michael Cole, and Roberts flipped them off. Yeah, this happened. Dur- this happened during the Randy Orton Dolph Ziggler match. So yeah, that's I, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the reason why they, uh, they they released them. Maybe Cole snitched and all this shit, and that's why he got released. But yeah, look into this. This guy was your best announcer. I really think he was the best ring announcer he currently had in the WWE. I think he's better than Lillian right now. I think he's better than um, Eden and um, and and JoJo. But um, now that you got rid of him, who's going to be on Raw? I, I'm 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 guessing they're going to have to put Lillian on Raw, which you have to be really careful because when he brought her back. He was botching a lot. They can all maybe that's what, back, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, they used to do SmackDown. Oh, uh, Jimbo? No. I, I, don't, I think Jimbo always does um, live events, but they might bring him back. But we'll I see. Mean, and I also, I, gotta, I, also heard, I also heard that they're thinking about bringing in Byron Saxon because he did a ring announce for NXT and, and I believe SCW. So they're actually thinking maybe they'll put in Byron Saxon. Mm-hmm. Um... But we'll see. Uh, I I could see maybe Eden doing SmackDown now and possibly doing having Lillian do Raw. But it's nah, it's Raw, that. That's I'm sorry, Lillian's got Lillian needs to stay on SmackDown. It no homo. They need to have a a man's presence at Raw uh, when it comes to being the ring announcer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, that doesn't matter what sex you are. I mean. I Lillian was doing good uh, during the Attitude Era, but when he brought her back, she was, like, fucking up a lot, and that's why she was on SmackDown, because, you know, they can edit out what, what, what whatever she fucks up on. So, yeah, that's the reason uh, why I said I don't know about her being on uh, Raw. Yeah, because... We'll see. It, yeah, because you never know. She might call Jack Swagger Zack Ryder again, you know, in the, on a live <laughs> Raw show. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know the good dance, but... This could be an opportunity for Eden, um, Cody Rhodes' wife, because uh, she was in ring announcing NXT, which she was not bad at it, and they could part do her, put her on SmackDown. Um, you know, it'll be a big we'll opportunity for uh, Byron uh, Saxon to remove from uh, being an NXT, uh, uh, calling the matches to you know being a ring announcer. Yeah, and so they probably put Byron Saxon. We'll see. But Mike he does do superstars, right? 
Yeah, I, I don't be ring announcing, but he does commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does commentary for Superstars, which is taped same day as Raw. So he's yeah. there. So Yeah. Um, my question I want to ask to both of you guys, what is Justin Roberts' future? Is like, Do you think he will stay in the wrestling business? Will he do something else like MMA or boxing? Uh, because uh, I can actually see him in boxing. You know what? All I have to say, he's going to be on Chris Jericho's uh, podcast, I think, this week sometime. So yeah. listen to that, and, and we'll have answers right there from the man's mouth for himself. Yeah, you know I, 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 I heard that, but I don't know if that if that's going to be. I think that might have been uh, recorded. recorded in advance. You know what I mean? Because I I remember Jericho mentioning it a couple weeks back, like that he was gonna he didn't announce the date that Justin Roberts was going to be on, but he said you know recording talk is Jericho with Justin Roberts soon, so. I, I don't think, you know, he'd be able to get Justin Roberts that quickly onto his podcast, especially after just being released. So I think it might be recorded in advance. I'm not sure. I guess we just have to wait and listen to see if it's going to be after his release or before it. Yeah. But, um, but I, like I said, I could see him doing boxing for some reason if, because I don't know if TNA will want them to replace uh, Christy Hemme. I think they like Christy Hemme, so I don't think they want him to replace her. Um, Lucha Underground, nah. Because I like the ring announcer. She's she's hot. You gotta check her out. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely. And and yeah. And anywhere and, else, and, I can't. And, see. What sucks? You know what sucks that somebody mentioned is that Josh Matthews, not Josh Matthews. Um, you know. All these guys, Max Stryker, you know, he Max Stryker is a huge wrestling fan in general, you know, and so is Justin Roberts. You know, Justin Roberts was just this big just wrestling fan. You know, he loved wrestling, and, you know, people have said it time and time again about how, like, the WWE just drains you of your love of wrestling. You know, it just takes it away from being in that, you know, environment for so long, and I don't know if Justin's going to want to continue doing it. Um, I think he, he'll probably just want to take a break for a while, you know, just kind of clear his head. It, it definitely sucks. And it's like, you know, WWE has all these guys probably in the back that aren't wrestling fans, you know, that don't give a shit about wrestling and couldn't care about the product, you know, probably maybe writers, I don't know. But they probably have them. And then you have a guy like, you know, Justin Roberts, who just, you know, loves wrestling, and he, he probably loved his job, and he had fun with it, and, you know, he was good at it, and, you know, and then he's released, and, you know, even if it's because of budget cuts, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't find somebody else to cut. You couldn't cut the Great Khali. I mean, what the, what the fuck is the Great Khali doing? He's not I doing mean, anything. also, before you say, you know, him getting cut, you know, there's also talks that they didn't resign him, they didn't exercise his contract. So, you know, it's not like they say, Oh, you're cut, you know, you're Well you're yeah, done. that I think I think that's what that, that's what I meant to say is that they couldn't, you know, resign him. Probably maybe because of the budget cuts. You know, they didn't have the money to it, but yet, you know, they're spending all this money on all these guys that don't need to be in there. So it's I don't know. It, it just sucks because then you look at it and like a guy like Justin Roberts who worked hard to, you know, get where he was and he had a good job and he was doing good and he was having fun. And then in a moment's notice, it's taken away from him. So definitely yeah. not the best situation, but uh, I'm sure Justin Roberts, he'll, he'll do fine in the future. He's still a young guy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Like you said, he he doesn't have to be wrestling. Like I like I said, I I can see him doing boxing for sure because um, the, the way how he ring announced, I can doing like I'm not saying it doesn't have to be a big fight like Money Weightwater. Like he ain't gonna be um, Michael Buff or no way. But I can see him doing a, those little Showtime fight shows and he can make some good money out of it. I can't see him doing MMA because I 
you if you notice the MMA uh, ring announcers, you know, like in the UFC or, or Bellator, it seems like they put more energy to it, like fighting for the blue corner. Like, I can't see him doing that shit. You know, um, boxing will be best suited for him if he wants to do something else besides wrestling. So, um, I wish we wish him luck in the future. And I, and I actually have a picture of him on my Facebook. So uh, I'll probably post on my Instagram on our Instagram pretty soon. So, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. You know, speaking of our release, uh, Willie Mack got released before he got uh, before he came in, uh, or was or we could say before he got reported to the to the performance center. Uh, yeah, I guess the release happened yesterday in the morning. So um, I feel bad for Willie for this. I mean. He, I mean, I'm I'm not blaming WWE for this, but I to me people saying that maybe because he felt a drug test, but to me I feel like due to the budget cuts they can't really bring him in. So that's that's my opinion. I don't know what you guys feel, but that's my opinion. Yeah, that, uh, due to the I just know yeah, it know. sucks. I, I just know that it sucks, and I don't know what the situation is, but I'm pretty sure Willie will have another, uh, you know time uh, to shine in the WWE, and uh, I heard what Brian said, you know, he kind of fussed with the fishy here, but who knows, we'll see. I'm pretty sure uh, we'll even get a, another chance um, at either WWE, TNA, somewhere. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Um, I believe, like, say in the future, if he wants to get on TV, like, I mean, he, I know he could, he's on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, um, but if he wants to do, like, Lucha Underground, I'm, I'm sure he has ties for there because, you know, I went to a show with him and he, he was walking around. He went in back, back and forth backstage and talking to some people back there. I think he has ties for them if he wants to do something for Lucha Underground. Um, TNA, I don't know if he has ties there, but I would like to see him on TNA. You know, I would like to see him going against guys like Samoa Joe or Austin Aries, you know. Oh, he's got ties with yeah. fucking TNA. If, uh, if, uh, he uh, wrestled fucking Samoa Joe at uh, that uh, one-time thing at the yeah. Tampa Chess from Hollywood. Come on now. You think Samoa Joe didn't go back until TNA Waddle? Also, I mean, but the question is if TNA wants him. That's the main question. I mean, TNA don't want him. They're 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 crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but who knows? Uh, you know, that show, that AWS show I'm going to, it's, Probably won't be his last. Um, well, most likely it's not going to be the last time we'll see him really Mac. So, um, hopefully we'll see him again in the PWG show before you know if anything happens. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens, Willie Mac. Um, yeah, definitely yeah. a sucky situation. Um, you know, people saying that he failed either medical or physical tests. I don't understand that one because they do those things months in advance, and that's what gets you eventually sign to the WWE. So if he would have failed one of those, then he wouldn't have even reported this late. It would have, they would have, you know, just not done anything with him months ago. So I, I'd like to think that it was probably something, like you said, within the budget cuts that they just they didn't have anything for him right now. And you know, somebody, somebody brought up a point. I mean, it was years ago, but... Um, Cesaro, when he he actually got signed to with the Bell Metal contract um, a couple of years before he actually got signed in 2009, 2010, and he was about to, you know, go into developmental and do all that stuff, but he got released before he even started. And then, you know, a few years later, he came back and he got signed eventually and then got put up to the main roster. So you never know what's going to happen. I think for the WWE, they they don't. It's nothing bad. It's probably nothing against Willie Mack, and who knows? You know, Willie works hard and you know keeps doing what he's doing. Maybe they'll find something for him to do within the next couple of years, and they'll you know contact him and bring him back. Um, I think Skits wants to mention something. Oh, you guys want to mention uh. For those that are sleeping on Bound for Glory, go watch it. I enjoyed it, and you guys know I always trash TNA a lot. But they put on a hell of a great fucking pay-per-view. Um, 
you know, uh, uh, I actually got to watch some guys from from uh, the Russell One product for the first time, uh, like the match with uh, uh, Manic and uh, Tanaka. That match was pretty good to start off the show. And uh, I'm not gonna watch in a in a while, but I'm loving this whole new Manic uh, character with him, um, Sonata, and uh, James Storm, like. It was like last time I saw James Stewart, he was like a cowboy, you know, and I hated him. Like I like, I like the hills, you know, and I'm fucking feeling it. So uh, I was definitely feeling that match. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Manic lost uh, to, to like an arm bar. It was like a kind of like a uh, the arm bar that uh, Kyle Kyle O'Reilly uses. He was still yeah. yeah. Uh, he tapped. He uh, he uh, tapped out. Uh, Ethan Carter, the third, uh, once against. Uh, excuse me if I don't say his last name right. Uh, Hama, uh, but uh, he's basically a uh, a big huge dude. It's kind of like a uh, uh, sumo type of guy. Uh, matches uh, uh, it was it was decent, you know. Uh, Ethan Carter got his W and. That's why I see why uh, Dean Ambrose doesn't do that move no more because Ethan Carter does it. Uh, they have the same finisher. I I guess they had the same finisher for like a while. I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, yeah, they do the same finisher. Yeah, I did not know this. I did not know that. And, uh, I learned something then, uh, earlier today. I'm like, oh, that's why Dirty D just changed. But he did Dirty D's a couple weeks ago that that – same one, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to figure out what is his finisher, but that's another uh, story. Uh, uh, MVP when it gets uh, Saka Sakamoto, Sakamoto. Yeah, Sakamoto, which is uh, uh, ten, was ten size manager. Uh, and MVP, in case people don't know, MVP uh, used to be in New Japan for wrestling, so. Uh, He's wrestling in, in uh, the Japan area before, so, you know, a lot of the fans were uh, behind him as soon as they heard his music hit. So, uh, But the match was good. The match was actually good. And I'm not an MVP fan. I'm really not a big MVP fan. I just don't. For some reason, I don't like MVP because he's so cocky for some reason. Maybe I just don't like his character. Maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but the match was good. Um, it was pretty decent. They got uh, in the uh, crowd. A little bit, um, but of course MVP picked up the the win there. Uh, so yeah, check that one out. Uh, now this match probably match of the night: TNA X Division match, Low Key versus Kaz Ha Asu. Kaz Ha Hold on, Kaz Harashi. Hey, I'm trying here, people. Uh, versus yeah, yeah. Joe. I know because he was WCW, so. <laughs> Yeah, Samoa Joe's a fucking killer, dude. Like I, I haven't seen Samoa Joe on this level in in a while since probably uh, last time I saw him out here in, in Cali against Willie. Uh, like he was on some whole other shit. Like he was on his A game, and uh, him and Low Key just chop, uh, just going back and forth with the chops. And just, just man, um, it was a good match. That's, that's all I gotta say. If you want to watch some good wrestling, watch those three get it on. Um, it was definitely a, a, a match of the night. Um, now this next match, I probably don't know how to say everybody's name because they're all Japanese, but uh, I could tell you one of the guys wrestled with a jacket on. Uh, um, I'm not gonna go through their names because it's probably hard, but I'm gonna try anyways. Uh, Kosa Roshi and Kota Ama versus Andy. Uh, Wu and El Hijo. I'm just tired, people. <laughs> but um, all I gotta say, uh, that match was pretty uh, good. I think they had to put on a tag team match for uh, the Russell One audience because they had uh, the tag team match for you know the TNA audience. They had a, they had two TNA uh, st- uh, you know. Um, Stars, uh, different tactics go at it, which was Team 3D and 
going against Abyss and Tommy Dreamer, which that match was fucking out of control. It was like a hardcore match, basically. Uh, of course, Team 3D gets the W because they went into the uh, TNA Hall of Fame. Uh, I feel bad for my boy uh, Tommy Dreamer uh, getting 3D into the uh, into the uh, not the table but the thumbtacks. Uh, so that's that happened. Um, Havoc went against Velvet Sky Destroyer. Uh, what should I say after that? Uh, stick to being a pretty Velvet Sky. Uh, the Great Muda and Tajiri went against uh, James Storm and the Great Sonata. That match, uh, the Great Muda and uh, Tajiri got the W. That match was, uh, I think it probably should have went before the Team 3D, uh, Tommy Dreamer, um, Abyss match. It should have been in that spot for some reason. But, uh, uh, but uh, like I said, the Great Muda and uh, Tajuri got the win. And after, um, uh, Matic, a.k.a. TJ Perkins, came down and uh, they were, like, choking him out and shit. But then Team 3D came for the rescue. And that was the pay-per-view. But I think uh, folks need to go check out this uh, Balfour Glory uh, pay-per-view. And I think I'm going to keep my eyes back on TNA because I've been bashing them for, like, a while, as you guys know. Yeah. Yeah, I, you can watch it tomorrow night. Um, yeah, uh, nine. I'll probably be live tweeting for it and see what you think. And because um, uh, TNA seems like me very interesting the next couple of weeks. Uh, if you read the spoilers, uh, <laughs> I, I I'm sure you're gonna like the next world champion. And um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. And um, before uh, we go to off air, I just want to give out some updates. This just uh, happened last night. Uh, Wrestling Cares just announced some um, a couple of more participants for their tournament. Um, I'm gonna start off with their tag team. Uh, if you're familiar with Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, um, the tag team Footloose, Footloose has been added for the tag team tournament, which is uh, Todd Chandler and. Dan Joseph, um, they're they're okay. They're not a bad tag team. It's just like it's kind of funny how they come out with that Footloose song and they start dancing. And Todd Chandler is pretty good. I like Todd Chandler. He, he, he's a good wrestler. And you pair him with Dan Joseph with a tag team, it's kind of fun. There you go. <laughs> yeah, if you go to that damn wrestling chair, so I can see you dancing to that damn song. <laughs> um, and the uh, women's tournament for wrestling Karis, uh they added some. Um, Talent there. That is, uh, I don't know if you're her name, but uh, Savannah Riley. She's from the, the North Cal area. Uh, she's a regular uh, for Pro Wrestling for Shield. She's just, uh, she's she entered, they put her in the tournament. Uh, they also added Mariah Moreno. She's was a regular in AWS. She hasn't been there for a while. She's going to. Uh, Mariah. Be, yeah. Mariah Moreno, yeah. Uh-huh. She's going to be on, yeah. She's going to be uh, on the tournament. And and now they also added um, Nicole Savoy. She's also part of the North Cal uh, area, so they added her too. So. You know what I noticed? There you so go. This, 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 down, this year, they're, they're like staying real local. They're not going, uh, you know, out of California to pick up uh, talent, which is which is cool, you know. Put put uh, SoCal on the map, uh, put California on the, on the map, period, you know. Yeah, cause, uh, I don't, yeah, because most of you see is like, well, the only ones you can say like from the tag tournament, they're not from California. Was Reno Scum? They're from Nevada, and um, and for the women's side, they brought in Hannah, the Halloween Hunter. She's not from the California area. I think she's from New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. But she mostly does shows around the you know the CC, no, not CCW, WSU. Shine and all those other stuff. She's been wrestling on the East Coast a lot, so yeah, that's like I'm, the only one right in. I'm hoping to see uh, Chiller to Melissa, you know, because he does a lot of stuff with Championship Wrestling. I'm excuse me, not Championship Wrestling, probably, but AWS a lot. And you know, of course, she works, uh, you know, Shine. So uh, it would be nice yeah. to see uh, her uh, a part of that tournament and maybe get Candice LeRae up in there. 
I don't know if you know, but she uh, she's gonna be in the they announced for the November show. She's it's gonna be her and Hudson Envy for that women's title yeah, I saw that. in November. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Um, well, we're running out of time uh, for WH Radio. Um, I think it's time for us to uh, throw our plugs. Um, I'm gonna let you start off, kids. Go for it. Fuck it. Oh, okay. Um, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Heads. Always got the news going up with WWE, TNA, international independents. We got writers on our sites, different people like Chris, ROH Code, uh, PW Smart Talk. He does work on there. Um, uh, we have a couple new writers. Um, uh, Smart Talk himself is now uh, uh, now writing for us. We have uh, Kiana. Uh, his his um his uh his name on Twitter is uh not Seth Rollins but it's uh WWE Seth Rollins for some reason. Um uh, but uh we got some writers, so uh look up wrestlingheads dot com. We're on YouTube dot com back slash wrestlingheads. Uh we're on uh if you want one of our t shirts Check one of our tees, ProWrestlingTees.com, dot com backslash wrestling heads, Instagram wrestling heads, Vine wrestling heads, everything wrestling heads. Just Google us. Yeah, and uh, you can follow me at Sinister Six Thirty Two on Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. Um, yeah, like I said, check out wrestlingheads. dot com. Uh, check out all these blogs. Um, Hopefully this weekend, maybe when I wake up from PWG, I'll I'll do my classic match of the week. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll awake, be awake first and get to be, still be knocked out. So um, oh, I'll be up. Oh, it, it's PWG. <laughs> it, it's like uh, it's like another day of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, um, like maybe right before we go to Lucha Underground, I'll do a, I'll post a classic match of the week and um, yeah, and uh, that's about it. So yeah, just. Follow I forgot to follow my Twitter. Follow WH Sketch, people. I'll talk yes, to you. W- yes, yes, follow him. Um, yeah, so... Oh, that's how I'm hanging. <laughs> I was just waiting. I thought, I was I thought Tom fell asleep. No, 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 I was listening in. I was listening to your uh, review of Down for Glory and all that. You know, it sounds better than what I thought it was going to be, and you know, I was probably I was just you know judging it off of the card alone, but I'm gonna tell you like you know, this, maybe, uh, maybe maybe I'll uh, check it out uh, this week. But uh, like I told I Brian to out, Cage uh, earlier, like I told Brian Cage Japan. earlier, I got a bola in, which means that this week's gonna be dedicated to watching that. So that's gonna be my week. But you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. Make sure you follow me there. And uh, I got to give another big shout out to Mr. GMSI Brian Cage, the fucking machine, whatever you want to call him. Get your shit in. I'm gonna be in the front row saying that, begging on the fucking mat. Just uh-huh. do it. Do it. Make sure you guys pick up a uh, pick up a shirt from him. Um, like I said, I want to thank him once again for being on the show. Great talk with him. He's a funny guy. Uh, great talent on there. And if you want to help support him, you can check out ProWrestlingTees.com slash Brian Cage. Get some merch, and then, you know, start working out, and then you'll end up like him. Yeah, definitely. And uh, before we go on uh, off the air, I just want to say, uh, I guess you say congratulations to uh, Mike Bennett and Maria. They're married now. And uh, Mike Bennett. Congrats. Yeah, Mike Bennett, if you think you're the only person that can see Maria naked, you're dead wrong. We could go to a place with Max and watch her naked. This fucking guy. This but fucking you know, guy. You can do is hit it. It doesn't matter do. that millions of people have seen her <laughs> naked because he's the only one that gets to see her naked every day and gets to actually hit that. So, but big up to Mike Bennett and Maria. Congrats on getting married. Um, <laughs> Congrats on getting married, you know. Both of those uh both those wrestlers, they're good. Um, you know, Maria doesn't wrestle as much, but I saw her um when FWE was streaming and all that, so she could still wrestle, she could still go out there, but 
she's still good in that manager's uh, position. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Shout! I want to say uh, I want to give a shout out to all of our listeners who listened yesterday, and whoever listens to our show, um, appreciate the listen. All right, then. So until what Thursday, we are out. Peace. Peace. Phenomenal talent, and I mean, they brought him in, they checked him out, they know he's there. Like you said, he's on his radar, so it doesn't rule out anything. Um, it, it does suck the worst, though, because, like, the PWG goodbye was awesome. Um, yeah, it was real, real emotional, really, really touching, like, just an awesome thing. And it sucks to have that kind of goodbye and then not be gone. You, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I don't know. It's like kind of this awesome, awesome good, like, goodbye, like, last appearance, and then, like, you're going, you know, moving up in the world, and then to be there back, like, it just, you know, it's almost like the same context of, like, getting this awesome job, so you fucking hate your boss, and he's, like, the most evil dipshit, and you get to quit the most awesome way and tell him, you know, to, to, to stick up his ass, and, it, and you come back the next day, like, hey, so I kind of need my job back, like, can we work something, you know what I mean, like, so it just sucks that he had such a great farewell, and then now they, they freaking left him hanging, like, that sucks. Yeah, definitely, and, um, yeah, I was actually looking forward to this. I actually won free um, front row tickets for this, and uh, I was looking forward to it, and all of a sudden you get this. But the good thing about this is that I, I, I still get a chance to see Willie um, continue on, and, you know, and hopefully in the future he'll have he'll, uh, an opportunity, you know? So Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, and either way, it won't affect the outcome of the match, like, as far as like whether like whether he was leaving or not, the match will still be just as good. So I mean, it's not like it's yeah. gonna be any better or worse. It'll still be you know a great match. So yeah, definitely. So I can't wait for that. Um, that's like now four chances to see Brian Cage in the next two weeks for me. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not bad, right. not bad, <laughs> not bad, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. um, I'm gonna pass it back to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. All right, my next question also pertains to something that's upcoming for you. Uh, November 1st, at Dreamwave Wrestling, you're going to be in a triple threat match against Mr. Johnny Gargano and Matt Cage in a triple threat match for the Dreamwave Championship. And Dreamwave is a company that I really didn't know much of, and I'm actually starting to hear some buzz about it, and people are telling me to check it out, and I'm getting more into it. And you're going to be in this huge triple threat match, of course. And of last month, in uh, September, you actually went one-on-one with Matt Cage for the title in which you came up on the losing end. But now you're getting another shot. So just talk about this match coming up. And, you know, it's actually going to be a huge card. Uh, Brodus Clay is going to be on it, Joey and Candice. It's going to be a huge card. And I feel like Dreamwave is a company that doesn't get a lot of recognition. You know, that's right. They, they put on awesome cards. Um, I was supposed to, I, I feel bad, too, because I, I was supposed to have been booked on by them, like, so many times. They wanted me for this big, like, triple shot in June, and I couldn't because of a bodybuilding show. Then they wanted me in July, and I was hurt. And then they wanted me in that August show, and I wasn't sure if I'd still be hurt or not, so we decided to postpone it. Then I finally made it out there in September. September, I still wasn't 100%. Uh, I don't think anybody really noticed. But, um, you know, I saw the good match with Matt Cage. Yeah, I did come on losing the end, but that's only because he cheated, all right? I wasn't honest. Come on. Look, look at Matt Cage. You look at Matt Cage. You look at Brian Cage. You tell me which was the real Cage, all right? I'm Matt Cage. Brian <laughs> Cage. No way. No way. We're we're selling believability here, but uh, he's, not, he's not going over on Brian Cage. Um, but, uh, no, no, I had an awesome time. And what was great about that show, I've never seen it done before in the, in the indies. Um, they brought me in completely unannounced and unknown to everyone. They didn't, they didn't advertise me. They didn't do anything. Like he wouldn't, and you know, and and I was like, oh man, that sucks. It's kind of ruined some stuff I wanted to do, but it, it made it kind of fun, like just because I, I appreciated the attempt. Like he wouldn't let me go to like you know Victoria, like Lisa's restaurant. He wouldn't let me go like anywhere else. Like he brought me and I had to go straight to the venue, and just sit there, stay backstage. I couldn't come up. I couldn't do the meet and greet or something. But, like because he wanted absolutely nobody to know that I was there. And uh, they had this little like mic segment where uh, Rose and I don't know who else you know, got like, pitted into a, a cage match like the following show. And uh, uh, then Matt Cage is trying to have his little celebration for winning the title. And then he told him, like, oh, wait, you're going to get a cage match tonight, you know, as well. 
And it was like, what? And then my music hit, and I came out, and to my surprise, you know, most everybody knew who I was, was freaked out. And uh, it was just awesome because you don't get that kind of, you know, unknown, like, watching Raw Surprise, you know, in the 90s ever. Also because it, it kind of ruins, you know, uh, spending money to bring somebody in. Like, the, the point is to try to help draw some people or get attention to it, you know what I mean? Um, so the fact that they did that, I thought that was pretty rad, just because I, I don't know of that ever happening anywhere else. Um, so I, I, I kind of marked out a bit for that because I just thought that was really cool. But uh, another place too, they treat the rest is great there, man. They, they brought a bunch of food in. They have a masseuse there and stuff. I mean, just just a bunch of different nice things that you can really appreciate. But they are a really great company, man. They put a great card in. They bring in a lot of great talent. I mean, their roster is is you know not subpar by any means. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping it, it blows up and, and does you know better and better as well. Yeah, that's that, that's definitely an interesting story, and um, I'm looking forward to hopefully checking this out. Hopefully, getting to see this match and see 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 the the bigger cage come out on top this time. The real you, you know, you also <laughs> that, that's a, that, exactly yeah for sure. But uh, and, and I had a twist to that too. I've never I've never done any. I've never even freaking. Uh, Locked up with Johnny Gargano before, so uh, it'll be my first first ever encounter with him as well. So that's an additional plus for sure. Oh, definitely, and it should be a great, great, uh, great match, great event. Um, I rec, I, I'm starting to recommend Dream Wave because I'm just starting to find it out because it's kind of flying well under the radar, but I'm sure to get up there and it'll be recognized soon enough, just like a lot of indie companies are. All right, Oscar, I'm going to toss it right back to you. Yes. Uh, my next question I'd like to ask you about a, um, a certain gentleman that, that used to manage you, um, Piercy Pringo III, uh, a.k.a. Paul Bear, which who entered the Hall of Fame this past year's uh, WWE Hall of Fame. Um, I'd like to ask you that, um, that you know, he managed you in the past. Um, I want to ask you that, that what kind of person was he um, in and outside the ring, and how do you feel that your name is the um, list of guys he managed, guys like Steve Austin and, and The Undertaker? Uh, you know what? It, it's 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 awesome. Uh, I remember the first time uh, he got brought in to manage myself and, and, and Sean Ricker for uh, Natural Selection. I remember, the, you know, they were all cutting promos, and they had to cut just a solo promo. They brought him over and... You know, I said, okay, you know, put put us over, basically. And, man, he cut the fucking most amazing promo ever. I mean, I was just like, wow. Like, we get this guy with us? I mean, I to mark out because it's freaking Paul Bear. That's rad. But, I mean, just, like, the, the guy was unbelievably talented. Um, so good, so good. But, um, personally, man, such a sweetheart. Such a, such, such a nice guy, man. He would just be so supportive and then nice to everybody in the locker room. And, you know, he, he didn't need to do that. And, like, just, just, just a, a great individual. Um would would talk to me, you know, personal life stuff and aside. He would he send me Facebook messages here and there just to catch up with. I mean, just just a great dude, man. And um, I mean, it, it was uh, unfortunate that he went, but I mean, I was actually just kind of kind of glad for him because I know he was a uh, a spiritual person, and uh, I know his wife had passed away. Uh, I don't know the exact time before before him, so um, I feel like that he was not just like depressed or whatever, but. You know, definitely, I think maybe, maybe a little lonely, and I think that like he can find happiness in passing and enjoying her in the afterlife. Um, but um, but no, definitely, definitely a great guy. I was glad to meet him, even more glad to have him. You know, the, be able to work with him. You know, and to say that oh, I got to manage Paul Bear, and then you know, even feud with him and Sean and stuff with exactly the guy that has such a great legacy. Uh, you know, working with so many people. I mean, it was just it was just awesome. So. Uh, I was thankful for it. And like I said, yeah, I can't see a bad thing about the guy. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny you mentioned uh, Sean Ricker. Uh, I did saw a tweet, like, right after he got released from the WWE that um, that they'll love to see a uh, natural selection reunion for once. Um, how possible can that be? Image to have worked and had uh, a shit of a match where I wasn't able to do anything rather than just pull off the show and – you know, because, and, and save my, my health as well. So um, I, I didn't want to, and I, I was hoping it would go down. I, mean, I drove to the show. I was still in L.A. for the whole weekend, and I was hoping that, you know, something would change. But, I mean, 
it, it just wasn't getting any better. And I mean, it, it was definitely the, the smart move to do to, to to pull off the show. But yeah, it was the main show I was looking forward to all year. I mean, when I tore my hamstring and I missed eleven, I was so pissed about that. But I was like, you know what? As long as I make Bola, I'm fine. I can miss all these other shows for six weeks. But if I make Bola, I'll be good. And that's the freaking the only show I miss after that. So I mean. It is what it is. It's came and gone. Nothing I can do about it now. But, I mean, yeah, like I said, in the long shot, it was probably a smart move for for the health of my knee, but also, I mean, just, just for the fans and for the overall, you know, matches that weekend. You know, TJ and, and Bobby Fish killed it. They had an awesome match. And I think if I would have been in there, it, it you know, probably would have been the greatest thing. For sure, man, for sure. But good to hear that you're getting back to almost 100% and, you know, there's plenty of ass whooping to come in the future. I can expect exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I got, I got to make up, you know, for, for some lost time. So I got to double up on, on getting my shit in. Yeah, and what what a better what a better way than to kick it off against the debuting UHA Nation and PWG. So I yeah. know tons yeah. of people are hyping it up. So what a way to come back. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I almost feel like I'm making the debut, too, after I'm missing, you know, the last couple of big shows. So like I've been been away forever, so it's like, uh, you know, returning for me and uh, debuting for him. It's going to be awesome. Without a doubt. All right, Oscar, I'm going to throw it back to you. Yes, um, I know we're still in the uh, uh, in the sub I mean, topic with PWG. Um, my next question I'd like to ask you that that you're going to be wrestling a debuting UHA Nation. Is there anybody that you like to see debut in PWG in the future? That anybody who has, has an opportunity to work with PWG? Um, let's see here. Oh, I'm sure it's funny. Um, maybe I'll be biased too, since some people I get along with. But I, I, he actually was almost uh, almost took Bobby Fish's spot before he replaced Air Fox. But um, a fellow Northern Californian that I actually started up with, in Timothy Thatcher, who's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know him or not. He's been with, with Evolve and stuff as of late, but. Um, he almost got uh, got the call to come to Bola, uh, but it wasn't able to work oh. out. But I would like to see him get another opportunity to uh, to, to you know to debut down there, um, especially too. It's like I wasn't sure how his style would get over, but I mean, geez, all the guys are bringing in from Drew Gulak and and freaking Zack Saber Jr. and, and Kyle O'Reilly, obviously with that style. Like a lot of guys have that you know Matt submission submission based style now, so I think he would do do great down there now. Um, Outside of Tim, let's see who else, who else is there. Uh, maybe Chris Dickinson from uh, oh, yeah. uh, over there. Yeah. Um, PCW, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, there's guys that uh, uh, I mean Marco Estrada up in up in Canada that worked a couple of times. I think is really great and would do well there. He's got a great look. He can do tons of things. He's he'd be an awesome competitor. That's that's a relative unknown. I think would kill it down there. Um, see, so yeah, I'll cover that. I don't know, those those probably are the first three names that come. To, I mean, Alex, I think they're 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 good and deserve it. Obviously, you know, I'm I'm cool with all of them, but so, I mean, I, I'd I'd love to see them get that opportunity. Cause I know, you know, in the indie world, almost like everybody's trying to get the pro wrestling girl as if it's like the WrestleMania of the indie, just because it's you know the as Tommaso Trampa said, the Disneyland of of you know wrestling. So, um, you know, it, it is just like an awesome awesome place to, to wrestle and just like a, a feeling and sense of accomplishment, you know, to get booked there. Since it's so many people want to be booked there, and it's so hard to get on. Yeah, definitely, I get you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, as a fan, I'm I'm very patient. We gotta be patient to who we want to see. Like, uh, like I I agree with you. I like to see Thatcher in there. He's he's a great talent. I I, I hope one day he'll make it down there. And uh, and a tag team I would love to see the debut in PWG would be the, the Juicy Product. I mean, those guys will. We'll um, we'll, we'll light up that crew, see the crowd. I know for sure they will. So that's a yeah. I know they've, they've had they've, they've had quite the steam over there. Yeah, over there. Need to the the bring so, them in the yeah, West Coast. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> it'll be freaking great. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be just patient. So you know, I was waiting for Bobby Fish, and finally got him. So you know, I, I'm I'm a patient guy. So. <laughs> Um, well, you know, people I'm gonna, people will get you, you people usually get picked up from there, and you know, the, the rocks are thin out. They got to replace them. A good thing is there's always someone there waiting in line to replace you know, when people get signed or leave or whatever the case may be. But I mean, I'm just saying there's there's so many great talents out there, and there's only so many a handful of spots. You know what I mean? That you can have on the card. So and then luckily every now and then you get like a big All Star Weekend or Bola show where you can get some some people to debut and get some one off opportunities. But 
I mean, that's just a fact. It's not that people aren't good enough or, like, you know, that he wouldn't want to bring them in, but you can only bring in so many people at a time. So, I mean, exactly. You just got to be patient, wait for it, and eventually, you know, you make enough noise and, uh, you know, keep keep getting yourself more and more over. It's, it's like you get on the radar and eventually, you know, the spot will open and hopefully you're there for the call. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to go pass it back to Tom. Uh, go ahead, Tom. All right, sticking on PWG just for a little bit more. You know, 11 just passed, and you actually made your debut at a PWG 7, so it's been roughly four years since you've been in Reseda. Uh, just talk about some of your most memorable moments, some of your favorite moments that you've had there. Uh, well, you brought it up. Absolutely, hands down, still my favorite moment is 7. Uh, you know, I say I love having people's debut match. I remember having my debut match there. And uh, against Brandon Bonham, who is uh, probably my best friend in wrestling, and he's done hung up the boots now. But uh, I know I was trying to get a singles match with him for years. Like, before I went to the WWE, after I came back from the WWE, I kept trying to get a match with him. And it, it did get booked a few times, and the show would get canceled or postponed or or whatever the you know case was. And finally, after years, it finally got booked. And uh, he called me up. He's like, oh, dude, the match is finally happening. And it's fucking happening at PWG. I'm like, what? So, I, you know, obviously I was training on PWG for, like, almost equally as long. So to, to have both come together at the same time, I was so ecstatic. And, uh, I mean, I, I thought the match went fantastic. I love coming out and having the crowd chant, who the fuck are you? And then, you know, halfway through the match, I'm training, this is awesome. And they're giving the please come back and standing ovation. And, I mean, just, just the, the turn of the crowd and, like, the, I don't know, just, just everything about the match. I, I, I loved it. And it was the first time we ever worked. Seeing, I mean, we've both have been around each other so long. And good friends, but we've never got to work with each other. And I, I mean, I just love the match. Uh, the crowd was insane. I mean, that, that's still, I think, one of the just best PWG shows we've, we've ever produced. And that's, you know, I've seen a lot because every show they have is amazing. And uh, I think that crowd was one of the largest crowds, too, on seven, you know, with, with obviously uh, Brian Danielson being there right after he got temporary release from WWE. And that was just an overall amazing show, amazing feeling, amazing night. Hands down, my, my number one. Um, obviously, some... Uh, Honorable mentions, um, my match with Kevin Steen, just because that was kind of like my first, you know, push uh, up alligator, just, you know, like a, a local guy, if you will. Um, my match with Elgin, that's one of my favorite matches I've had. Uh, recently, my match with Rod, Roger Strong, definitely one of my, 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 my recent uh, really enjoyed, like, favorite matches. And probably, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll throw out the Tommaso Trumpa match just because of all the drama revolved around it with me. <laughs> getting uh, knocked out. And uh, the, the only time ever in my life I've ever seen the receded crowd go completely silent. Yeah, I was there. I, I was there, and your girlfriend, you know, ran down the stairs. I was like, which I saw her ran down. I was like, okay, this is not no angle or nothing. This is real. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know, because, like, a lot of people question, like, if it was real or not. And, like, even if you have DVD, it kind of looks like I'm starting back up. But, I mean, like, I was out. I was out cold. I remember Angelo saw it, and he thought I was dead, the ring announcer, and, uh, I don't. I don't remember shit. I don't remember the match at all now. I don't remember like two hours before the match. I don't remember a few hours after the match. I mean, I don't remember anything. People yeah. tell me stuff that happened after the match, and like, I don't. Know, that that's gone, man. It's a forgotten memory. So, yeah, yeah. It's a PWG regular. That's like one of the. Um, um... Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. Welcome back to Wrestling Edge Radio. It's me, Oscar, taking taking care of skits right now. Um, joining me now, there's no Jerry, but we got Tom. What's going on, Tom? What's going on, Oscar? How you doing tonight? Doing absolutely fabulous, man. Just, it's going to be a great-ass show tonight, man. And uh, the reason why it's going to be a great-ass show 
It's because we have a special guest here tonight. Um, for all you people that are listening, if you're familiar with the company's PWG, Championship Restaurant Hollywood, TNA, the name I'm going to bring up, you, you, you know this person really well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the fucking machine himself, Brian Cage. What's going on, man? Brian, hold on. Brian, are you there? Oh, second. I think there's something wrong with his uh, mic for a second. Hold on, let me just take something. All right, Brian, are you there? Yeah, you want to hear me? Yeah, now, we, a minute ago, we couldn't hear you, but now we did. There's something, uh, um, something happened to the mic, but now we can hear you now. Yeah, everything all good? You can hear me fine? Yes, perfect yep, yep. now. You're all good. It's, okay. It's, it's blog, you know what? It's blog talk radio trying to bury <laughs> you. But you know what? You're gonna come out there, well, and you're gonna, talk, just, you're gonna just get Larry the shit out of Blog Talk. Yeah, yeah. Blog Talk Radio needs to realize I'm gonna get my shit in, whether they like it or not. So she got to sit back and relax <laughs> while I'm on, on the mic. So chill out there. But thank you for the introduction, quite the introduction. And uh, I like you guys' little uh, little intro there too for your show. That was that was hot. Yeah, thank you. You know what? We were actually thinking about changing it, but now you're the third person that brought it up. We might not even change it at all. So <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get the show on the roll, I just want our listeners to know, if you guys have any questions for um, Brian Cage, you can always tweet us at Wrestling Heads, or you always can call us at 760-454-1107. I guess uh, uh, I guess I'll start off with a question. Um, my first question I'd like to ask you, uh, Ryan Cage, uh, this weekend, or, or Friday night, uh, you're going against the debuting uh, UHA Nation at PWG this weekend. Um, I'd like to ask you, are you looking forward for your match with UHA Nation, and uh, what's your thoughts of UHA Nation um, as, the, as a person? Well, check it out. I've never, I've never personally met Uha yet. Um, I know we've, uh, we've actually talked a lot uh, online just because so many times through Twitter and every social media deal, people have either asked him or myself, like, oh, I, I, when are you guys going to face each other? When are you going to face Brian Cage? When are you going to face Uha? Like, oh, I would love to see that match, blah, 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 whatever. So, uh, you know, I just started talking to him once I knew of him. I was like, hey, man, when's this match ever going to go down? Everybody wants to see it. And obviously, you know, being – being two big jacked up guys in the Indies who can both also do, you know, versatile things rather than just be a big powerhouse, um, you know, it obviously warrants, you know, wanting to wanting see. So so I'm excited that it's finally happening, even more so that it's finally happening at, at, at PWG. It's probably the best place to do it. And seeing Uha's debut match, I love having people's debut match just because it gives, like, an extra, you know, uh, oomph to the crowd to see somebody new. Plus, wrestlers are usually, you know, jazzed and really excited to, to work there for the first time. So it just – Kind of creates like an added special feel and atmosphere, you know, to to, to the bout. Um, and as far as you want from my talk now, like he's like a great guy, you know, he's jacked up. He lo- he looks like a professional, so that's always a plus. And uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm super jazzed about the match. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna be there this Friday. Um, I'm not only the you know the check out this match. I am, you know, I feel like this. Uh, First time opportunity to check out Uha Nation, um, you know, in person because you know I'm never in the East Coast and uh, I feel like it's a good opportunity to check out Uha Nation. So um, yeah, just, I, you know, I'm looking forward to it, man. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great time, man. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. So thanks for joining us here. My question. Uh, it's a little bit wrestling related, but because you've missed the past couple of PWC shows due to injury, uh, I just kind of wanted to get an update from you on how you're feeling physically. You know, how you've been back in the ring ever since, you know, sustaining the injury. So how do you feel overall? Uh, you know what? Actually, I, I feel almost, almost 100%. I, um, I, I tore my hamstring back in uh, the end of June, like literally like last day of June. Uh, and that had me out for like like six weeks or so. I came back, um, ha- had a couple matches that weekend. I trained like legs a couple times that leg or that week to uh, try to make up for lost time. I-, I was hitting stairs like crazy an hour a day, like just just killing myself. And what happened was my uh, 
my knee was overcompensating because my hamstring wasn't uh, – it wasn't, like, so injured. Well, I was worried about injury more, but it wasn't, like, firing correctly. So my knee, like, took up the the, the, the brunt of that, and it got inflamed. And um, and just where I wasn't, like, able to really do much with it. it wasn't, I don't know what the injury was. I really never got it properly diagnosed. But I, I thought it just kind of would go down from, like, overuse over a week, and it just didn't. And I, I still kept working on it. And uh, I got some treatment on it, kind of like prolotherapy. If anybody doesn't know what that is, that's that's like you inject basically sugar water into the area, and it creates inflammation, um, which which increases the red blood cells to, to to heal the injury more, not to get all scientific on you. Anyways, long story long. <laughs> um, so I, I had a treatment on a week before, and it, it helped out. And I did it again, and literally like a couple days later, which was Bola, uh, my knee just swelled up out of nowhere, like crazy bad, where I could like not walk at all and it was that way for like a good week and I actually wrestled the following weekend after Bola and I wrestled the weekend before Bola so it was just absolutely the shits on timing and uh, I should have been good to go on Bola and I just just was absolutely like I said just the worst timing so since then it's improved uh, the last couple of weeks I've been able to train legs again I've been doing cardio again so it's not 100% yet but I mean I'm probably like you know in the, the mid to high 90s so I feel I feel you know, great physically and, and able to go back to doing what I do. Oh, that's you know, it's good to hear that. I know you were disappointed that not only did you miss 11, but you missed Bola. But, uh, yeah, kind of disappointed probably said. isn't the right word, but, yeah, I was kind of bummed. <laughs> For sure. Whatever, whatever adjective you want to use, I understand. You know, everyone was upset because you couldn't get your shit in. But of do you course. think you said you wrestled, you know, before Bola and then after Bola? Um, you know, in independent wrestling, uh, it seems like guys tend to try to work through injuries to, uh, you know, because they want to make money because you, you know, you wrestle per appearance. But do you think yep. kind of missing Bola was just a precautionary thing saying, you know, I'm not going to risk doing this, you know, something could happen? Uh, well, you know, actually, because, too, I, I, I was limited in my matches, the match the week before Bola and after Bola, um, but I was able to get through it. And, no... What what it came down, I mean, realistically, when I look back at it now and how bad like my knee was that, especially that weekend, like I said, it was like a good week or so that it was pretty inflamed. But uh, I mean, I really doubt that I was going to be able to do much at all. I mean, I had like no strength in my leg. I, I had like no range of motion in my leg. But more importantly, um, being that it was Bola and PWG, like I, it was almost not. I mean, yeah, I definitely could have hurt my knee for sure. Could have easily torn something with no, like, muscle support to, to protect anything. But even more so with the fact that, like, look, if I can't go out there and properly perform at the level that I need to on this show, like, then that's just, like, it basically, it, it probably would have done more. Yes. And he, it was at no fault of his. So, I mean, you can't really be mad at the guy. It wasn't, it wasn't his fault. He did nothing wrong. I mean, he really just got fucked over. There was a shooting. Uh, there was a fight in the club that escalated out to the, outside of the club, and there was a shooting, and whatever happened, and the... The police actually came and investigated it. I think what made it worse was that the club owner tried to case save him on um, the, the shooting, and one of the security officers that were on uh, the premises for that, that concert, like, told him there was a shooting. So they wanted to investigate it further as if there was, you know, some other foul play or something else going on. So the police came and shut the place down, uh, you know, mid uh, middle of the day. So, I mean, it, it just is what it is. I'm glad I got this sorted out and it's reopened and, uh, I should be there on its uh, on the end of November, so maybe that match will still happen. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to the match. Um, you know, too, but going back to the show being canceled, uh, you know, he, he he took care of it well. He refunded the fans money. He had his food truck out there. He gave away all the food for free. I mean, oh my goodness, his family makes amazing food. They ain't no popcorn and hot dogs, you know, like at most places. This stuff is freaking unbelievable, and. Uh, you know, all the wrestlers were out there. We all, you know, we we sold some merch, but had a big meet and greet and hanging out. And I mean, it was still a good time. Everybody was in pretty good spirits about it. Nobody was, you know, hating life or all pissed off. Like it was, it was a good showing, and you know, it was, it was nice of him. To most promoters, would well, a the food. I mean, he already had that made, so he had to do something. With it, so he just gave it all free as, as apology. And then, so, like most promoters, want to try to freaking refund the fans. And he's like, oh, I guess it's my money. So we I mean, know he's a good dude. They still, you know, trying to take care of all the all the workers from the show. So, um, you know, it. It was literally probably the most random BS thing that could happen and, you know, probably the last thing that anybody expects to happen. Usually, yeah, it is the, the promoter, you know, being the scumbag or shortchanging somebody or shutting down the show or whatever. But, like I said, you know, it just it, – it's, it's not even one of those things. It's just like 
a super random rare occurrence that, you know, somebody just messed it up for everybody else and nothing you can really do about it. And it was what it was. And, I mean, it sucks, but looks like everything will get reconciled and move forward. Yeah, it was definitely one of the weirdest things that I have seen, you know, from something in independent wrestling. You know, anything can happen. But you know, to, to hear something to, like that to a good company definitely is never a good thing to hear. Oh, I know. It sucked for them big time. I mean, it, cause it, it wasn't their fault. They really just, you know. And, and, and I know he was worried about it, too, getting out on mine, that, like, oh, they canceled the show as if then they would get a bad rap about it when it had nothing to do with him. You know, it wasn't his fault. And, and two, they, they tried for uh, for a good hour or two that they had, trying to call every single person in town, any sort of connection they could get to – get a venue last minute, you know, on a freaking 30-minute notice to move the place somewhere else. But obviously, you know, no venue was open, especially on a Sunday, or nobody was going to come open it up or whatever. So, I mean, he tried to sort it out as best he could until the last possible minute that we had to get out of there. So, I mean, he did, he did look good, and it, said it still worked out. I mean, I, I think all right at the end of the day. But, um, you know, I, I was looking forward to that match too. So, you know, maybe something – uh. Maybe it could still happen or something similar might happen then on these next shows. Yeah, definitely. And I know a bunch of East Coasters love seeing you over here because we don't get to see you much over here. So it was just like, all right, come on. But yeah, yeah. hopefully you'll be back. I know, I know. You know, I, I've, seen, I've seen some of your matches and beyond uh, with Chris Dickinson, which you could actually, if any of the listeners want to check out, you can check out a, uh, you're on wrestling's YouTube page. It's up there. Check it out. Hard hitting match. Won't regret checking it out. So hopefully we'll get to see some more hard hitting action over here on the East Coast from you. I you know. I, I definitely plan on it and want to do. Uh, yeah, I was. I was stoked to be back. So you know, it sucked to come all that way just to uh, just to sell a T-shirt. But you know, like I said, it's it's, it's nobody's necessary fault. So. Um, I, I'm just, just glad I have an opportunity to come back again. Definitely. All right, Oscar, I'm going to throw it back to you. Yes, uh, I want to ask you a question about a uh, show that I'm also going to be attending, which you're going to be in a four-way match. In, uh, well, actually, the promotion is AWS. Uh, you're going to go against Mikey O'Shea. Jake Cabrera, and what's supposed to be the last um, appearance of Willie Mack, but uh, fortunately things happen, so I, it looks like that's not gonna it's not gonna be his last appearance. But um, yeah, you're gonna be in this four way match at AWS in Southgate, California. Um, I want to ask you, what are you looking for in this match, uh, this four way match, and um, and, and I believe you have wrestled all of them before in championship wrestling from Hollywood, if I'm not mistaken, from from your days over there. Um, yeah, what are you looking for in this match, in this four-way match, in this AWS match coming up? Uh, yeah, you are correct. I have I have worked all, all of them before in uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood. Also, good old M1, Mach 1 wrestling when I was around. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I am looking forward to a, a big uh, bruiser four way. Um I know I had a match similar to this in uh FSW Future Stars of Wrestling in Vegas with um was it Jay? No, was it Tito? Well it doesn't matter, whatever. But uh <laughs> uh you know, it's 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 all four big guys. Everybody can work, everybody can move. Um and uh I, I you know what you know? I don't even know if it announces it or it has been advertised as because I don't I'm not even sure. Is it a four way tag? Like like first of all is elimination. Uh, I'm on the Facebook. It's going to be a four-way matchup. It's, it's a four-way. I'm getting so like one a first, fall. First ten fall? Okay, okay. Yeah, first ten I do kind of like those more. I do like those a little bit more because uh, the elimination sometimes like, kills the uh, kills the build, you know what I mean? Like there's a fall. And it, it, it can linger on too long. There's pros and cons to both. But, uh but no, I've, I, you know, this will only be my second time working in AWS, and uh, I, I enjoyed yeah. it. I had a great time the first time. The first time, actually, it was against Willie Mack. It was uh, me and uh, uh, Tyler Black first. It was uh, our, uh, freaking, Tyler Bateman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sal, I was yeah. Like, Tyler Black. Um, uh, yeah, Tyler, Tyler Bateman. Bateman. <laughs> He's younger, and uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, he stopped on down from FG, or NXT and, you know, took on Drake Younger before he became a referee. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, it was versus Drake Younger and Willie Mack, and that was an awesome tag match. So uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to come down there. I, I was looking forward to work with in his last match, and uh, you know, I hadn't heard. So I, I was I was curious though. So has it been like announced or something that he's not leaving? Well, um, I guess uh, the WWE decided not to bring him in. I guess so. Um, yeah, so it was supposed to be his final match at AWS. He had his little PWG goodbye, and and um, this last Friday he had his goodbye at Santino Bros. Until the the news was broken yesterday that uh, that he's no longer. Uh, I guess uh, the WWE's not bringing him in. He had a statement. Uh, Willie Mack did said he was supposed to go to WWE, but uh, you know he was he was um, happy that they put him on the radar, and he still likes to continue working with PWG, Chapter Rest from Hollywood, AWS, and other promotions. So uh, yeah, I guess that's what happened. Mm-hmm. So the last you know what I, WWE I to bring him in. <clears throat> so you know that that I, that sucks, and you know cause I knew that was supposed to be the last match, so I was stoked to be a part of it. But I but I, I wonder, yeah. but it just seemed like. I don't know. It just seems some of the pieces of the puzzle weren't weren't coming together, and you know, I'm to be quite honest, it sucks for Willie, and nothing, nothing, you know, due to to Willie, but I'm not too surprised that they did that because just the way that it was going, uh, I don't know. I just I just smelled something fishy about it. I was like, you know what? I don't think they're bringing Willie in. I think I, I don't know what they were doing with it because I know he he, was gonna, he told me personally uh, one of the first people he called me up told me. And uh, but then him and Steen went to both camp, and how Steen got the big push and brought him right away. And Willie from the get go told me that they're bringing him in in October. And I just thought that was strange. Like, why the hell are they bring you in October instead of earlier? You know what I mean? Like especially Steen's leaving in August. Like what's what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. That's what he said. And, like just the longer it leaned on, it just kind of seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of updated information going. So I, I felt like they were going to kind of fucking just you know leave him hanging. So I, that totally sucks for him, man. But. uh you know, he's a phenomenal moment I'll never forget. So, uh, you know, I, there'll be more, but I'm not I'm not, not in like that way. But, you know, that's one of the moments I'll never forget. You just go on all these WG shows. So, um, yeah, I'm never going to forget that. So Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's all, it was an unfortunate accident. Uh, and I yeah. think we had a better match on paper that we wanted to do. But I think that the match we had with it was almost better. And the fact that just obviously there's still – it wasn't what we wanted, but that added a bunch of added drama – to the match because it was real, you know what I mean. So um, you couldn't have, you know, can that or plan that one out. And so I, I, that that I think gives it, you know, a little more special to the match and it gets brought out, brought up a lot. Um, obviously, I'm not, you know, happy that it happened, but I mean, it is what it is. For, it's not ballet, as they say, and uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely just brings up a, a lot of questions. And, and more so, I, I do remember like at one in the morning, two in the morning, when I was like, my memory kind of kicks back in. I remember talking to uh, to actually my, my girlfriend. Uh, now wife, um, that, uh, like, about the match. And I was like, we did this? We did, like, so I knew I was knocked out and my, you know, my head was killing me and everything. And I was like, we did the general suplexes? Like, did he crush me, crush me at the top rope? Or did we do that? We, I'm like, what? I was like, this, are, was I stupid? Like, what was I doing to do all these moves after I just got, you know, killed? <laughs> like, and, and even the next day, like, nobody wanted me to wrestle, but they still gave me the option to wrestle, so I took it. But I was, deep down, I was, I was a little worried because I felt like a strong you know, st- stiff breeze would knock me out. So I was a little concerned that, like, you know, I would catch a form or something and I would just go out, you know, flip the switch. And that's dangerous because the more that happens, then you're, you, you know, you fuck yourself. You get post-concussion syndrome real bad and keep on knocking yourself out and brain damage and you can be done. So I was a little worried, but, you know, luckily I it was it was fine. I got to wrestle Drake Younger and we killed it. And it was me more just getting my shit in. So, um, you know, that worked out. But, yeah, definitely, definitely a scary moment, but, you know, uh, a, a memorable and unforgettable one at that. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, I guess it's my turn to ask the question next. Um, now we're gonna go off the WG. Um, my next question is gonna ask you is relate to Lucha Underground, which I saw you at, at, at the last tapings. Uh, you had a match with um, Mariachi Loco, which uh, before we went on the air, you discussed that was a dark match. Um, my question I want to ask you about Lucha Underground is that uh, what is your status with them? Are you going to be showing it up regularly, or it was just at one time with Lucha Underground that you're going to be performing with these guys? Uh, no, I have uh, I, I, I have signed on completely. I have a deal with them, and uh, I will be uh, I will be there, you know, throughout the the rest of uh, 
of the taping. Hopefully it does well and keeps on going because I, I, right now everything that you want, I think it looks awesome, is awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm coming in looking to make a, you know, an impact in GMSI as well and be the effing machine that I am and, and uh, you know, tear it up. I thought the, the, the tapings that they did this past weekend or well, past show, shows or whatever um, were amazing. Uh, were you there for the Sunday taping? Uh, uh, no, I wasn't there Sunday. I was Saturday. The one you had with uh, oh. Lucha. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. But well, the yeah. Saturday taping still was great with those, the ten man matches and the ladder match and stuff. But the Sunday match, man, was like the probably the first time in a long time that I've been in to a wrestling match like as a fan, not just like as like a you know as a worker. I'm like, oh, this is a really good match. I appreciate it. Like, I was into it. Like, man, this is. I'm really enjoying this right now. Like I feel like a fan. Like it was a really good match. So I think they put out great stuff. But yeah, no, I'm 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 along for the ride. So that was just me getting my feet wet, you know, uh, warming up, seeing how it feels down there. But I will uh, I will be there from this point forward. Yeah, and um, I've been telling uh, people in the in this show that you know I I attended from the first show to a couple of shows after that, and. It seems like the show gets better and better, and uh, I recommend all you guys to check Lucha Underground when it debuts on the El Rey Network, October 29th, every Wednesday night. Uh, and don't worry, it's, it's going to be on 8 o'clock Eastern, so you don't have to worry about, you know, either Big Dam or TNA. You can watch that before, then you can watch TNA afterwards. So, um yeah, I recommend you guys check it out. And um, you're going by a stage now in, in Lucha Underground, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. That is right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I don't know if you'll change the names, but I, I, I'm i glad that I still have, have that part of it so there will be some consistency in the matter. But, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully Lucha Underground, um, uh, you know, I, you know, it gets better uh, in the future, and because I, I I see a lot of potential, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I enjoy every show I attend to, and I'm gonna go this weekend uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm also gonna see you there as well at <laughs> ICWG. So uh, yeah, it's gonna well, be a fun weekend. Got, yeah, you got three days of yeah. play. It sounds amazing, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, right. I, 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 I know where we yeah. want to go, and, you know, I think that they're doing great right now, going back to Lucha Underground. I think, you know, if everything goes well, man, they got a lot of, lot of good things in store. So, um, I, you know, I hope it does because it's, it's, it, will, it only helps the wrestling community. And, you know, it begets better competition. It gives everybody something else to look forward to, something else to watch. And, you know, it, it can only be beneficial to, every, to the fans, to the business, to the workers. I mean, it's, it, it's great all around. So, you know, I hope it, I hope it does well and keeps succeeding and, and grows and does what, it, what it's – Supposed to do what it hopes to do. So, and, and from what I've seen, you know, it, it's very possible to do that. I mean, I think too, what's nice about it is they're offering a different approach to wrestling than like a different product to watch, rather than you know trying to be a a, a second rate WWE. You know what I mean? Because if you're going to do that, that's exactly what you'll be if you succeed in second rate WWE. So, like, who's going to watch that? If they can watch the real thing, and uh, and even TNA. I don't know what's going on with TNA, but um, whether they stay or go, I mean, I still think it's it's different TNA. I think it has better, you know, pure wrestling and stuff um, than, than either one of them. And, uh, you know, obviously there's different people and it has, like, the Lucha Flair in it and stuff. But, I mean, it's it's not uh, it's, it's not AAA or CML still. So it's still very American style and, you know, has the same psychology and stuff. So I think it, it it's definitely uh, worth worth uh, checking out for sure. Yeah, yeah. See you in Burning Case. Check it out. Um, I recommend you guys check it out. Uh, can't wait when you guys on get get on TV. And uh, Tom, go call Comcast and say you want El Rey Network. Trust me, you'll yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Call Comcast. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going. Trust, trust I'm gonna. Me. I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna complain. I mean, talking with Comcast uh, customer service. Is a, is, a, is a little bit of a pain in the ass, just a little bit, but I think it'll be worth it. And there's a lot of hype going around Lucha Underground, so I think it'll be worth it having to do with their customer support. Yeah, definitely. Um, go ahead, Tom. I'll uh, ask him your next question. <laughs> All right. My next question has to pertain to something that actually didn't happen, and that was you were booked in a tag team match with... Uh, Mr. Tommaso Ciampa 
in Beyond Wrestling, which unfortunately didn't happen due to Beyond Wrestling canceling their show due to the shooting up the road, and they had to close down for a couple of days. I just wanted to get your whole opinion and thoughts on the whole situation that was going down there, talk about a little bit Beyond beyond Wrestling if you can, and of course, they're going to be coming back in uh, late November, so are there going to be any plans for you to possibly return? Um. I'm, I'm actually the, curious, uh, or curious, glad you brought that up. I'm more surprised that no one else has, has said anything about that. But, yeah, that was an extreme bummer, man, big-time bummer. Um, you know, I I, 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 well, I wrestled the day before. and did something, you know, drove to the airport, took a red eye over there. You know, it was all jet-lagged, tired of shit, sitting at the venue for a couple hours early, waiting for it. And literally, like, an hour before doors open, I think it was, uh, Drew walks in and, Calls everybody into the room and says, "Up, oh, the show's not happening. Show's over." And I'm like, "What? No way! Come on, really?" And uh, and to correct your statement, Beyond didn't cancel the show. The freaking city police shut down the venue. So, <clears throat> I mean, it it sucked. And normally, you know, you'd want to be like raging at the promoter, but Drew's a great guy. He got you know Drew that promotes uh, Beyond Wrestling. It's a fantastic place to work. 